Hello, everyone. Welcome. Why are you so small? <laughs> I'm Smoko. You're so tiny. <laughs> I am. That's actually. It's, I'm, it's, I'm fat and small. There you go. That's that's a little better. That's better. It's rare we actually get to see Co shown actual size. It's yeah. It's true. Yeah. At least compared yeah. to the two of us. I also yes. normally have my hair beanie on. Yeah, that also is not true. Not today. Yeah, not today. Not today. Hello. Welcome to Drop Frames. It's Sunday. It's already February for some fucked up reason. Uh, I can't. I'm still, still getting, it's been five days, still getting used to that. That's a weird one. Uh, we've got a little bit of news. We've also got, let's just start off the show. Have you guys seen this uh, AI Seinfeld stream? It's been the talk of the week. Uh, it's kind of wild. It's a weird thing. Have you checked it out I've, at all, Co? I've seen some clips from it, but nothing that has been funny. Yeah. I I know that I know yes, that it's like I agree still with you. learning. Yeah. I know it's still learning, and and most of the clips have been like it's kind of getting it. But then there's apparently a few clips that are that are going around making the rounds where they actually kind of nail a joke or two. Oh yeah. Um, but again, it's kind of like you know a thousand monkeys on typewriters situation where it's like if it's just endlessly doing jokes, you know some are going to land. Um, but yeah, I've heard, I've heard it's, it's still getting its stride and that it's probably going to need at least a few more months. The thing that, that I'm a little confused about is, and I, I don't really understand, is there a feedback system? Like, is I don't it know learning if it's learning what's funny and what's not, or is it just like always on RNG? Because I, I do think that it'd be super interesting if it was somehow plugged <laughs> into chat and like when chat started going off, like it was like, oh, that was funny. So I should like learn from that you know what i mean maybe yeah i if i don't know or maybe that was really racist and yeah. inappropriate that's um. <laughs> that's the thing is like chat would very quickly i think catch on to that and then it would be racist within five minutes <laughs> that's pro that's how most internet-based ais function yes so yeah. yeah yeah in fact i think the the ai vtuber already had some issues with that yep. early on they got banned yeah. for like two or it three was days like, it was like denying the holocaust because of chat and it's like oh mm. great that's awesome yeah super <laughs> yeah great um, yeah no I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm right there with you i tuned in it, it wasn't i didn't laugh at any of the jokes i just laughed at the absurdity but yeah Zeke, the whole the whole premise is crazy yeah. yeah i watched i watched it and you can see in the title it says make sense mode on and i think i've i always tuned in when it had that on did they ever shut that off because that's when i would like to tune in i have not because i watched it for off, like no i think a total of an hour maybe of the thing and it's it's funny for a for a, for a bit and but it's it's i mean it, i wouldn't say it's funny it's amusing yeah it's a, it's I mean, amusing in that like you you see novelty. a computer yes. like try to make you know uh coherent sentences um the funniest thing for me is the the actions of the the uh, uh, characters on the screen when they sit down, they do that like oh, lean yeah. way back, and then they sit or down, just like, absorb that shit's into funny. Their arms like switch positions and stuff. Like yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Now that shit, that shit made me laugh. That shit was funny. Um, but like the dialogue, like I was hoping it would be far more absurd than it is, and it's just like sometimes it's like kind it, of mean, okay. When it, when it makes it's sense nine. it's, it's really nine. mundane man it's yeah. like super like tepid there's nothing good about it it's just like watching two people talk to each other and <laughs> it makes sense and you're just like man this is not entertaining this is just this is just the the ai is like uh it, it, it feels like the ai if it was if it was a person the ai person could get it like would be middle management at an accounting firm right like that like so it's just boring <laughs> it is yeah i i haven't seen this they have a <laughs> okay someone in chat to be fair someone in chat said isn't that seinfeld though and you're not wrong i look i'm all you're uh, not wrong i'll say it i've never been i've never been a fan of seinfeld to begin with the show i flip oh, i flipped oh yeah i guess you're flipped on here i'll flip you back it's fine or although we I could mean, have to come no, Seinfeld like is there is cleverness in Seinfeld like this sometimes you took all the <laughs> sure. cleverness out of Seinfeld you took all the cleverness out of it like you you filed down all the clever edges you know and and this that's what this show is 
there yeah. it feels like seinfeld without the jokes without like anything fun happening yeah yeah uh outside of all that it is a little crazy it is a little surreal it is a little wild that like this can exist right yeah. like that's it's one of those things where i look at it, i'm just like wow what a weird what a weird thing that this is like where we're at that this is a and thing that exists I don't yeah, want I think, like my opinion to to like overshadow like how amazing it is because it is yeah, it yeah. is amazing to watch like it is it's a it's a a marvel to see AI like make sentences that you know and conversations that mostly make sense you know boring as it may be it's really fucking cool to see that you know yeah it's it's wild. They're definitely trying to <clears throat> trying to spin off the success a little bit. They opened up a Patreon. Uh, they've got merch now. Uh, they've been all over the internet, not only just links, but they've been interviewed by pretty much every major publication. I guess the big thing is like, how long is that going to last, right? Like, how long is that novelty going to exist for? Um, they've been hovering around ten thousand viewers, I think, kind of since the past week. Hasn't really wavered, but. A week from now, a month from now, when the press dies down, like, is it still going to be that? Is it going to start to, you know, half every couple of days? Well, I don't know where we're going to, where they're going to be it, viewership wise. If it stays how it is, I think like exactly like Zeke's, Zeke was like alluding to, it's just going to be a novelty. Like it's not, it's not funny to watch long term. You watch it, just like you said, it's like, oh, wow, this is crazy. This is a thing. You watch it for a little bit. It's not really that funny. And then you go do something else and you never go back because there's no reason to. But if it starts actually getting funny, if it's the kind of thing where we start seeing it make jokes and like actual funny things start happening, that could be dangerously entertaining. Um, like that could be wild. That yeah. could be that could be the kind of thing where it's like if there were enough funny moments, people just keep it on to wait for something funny to happen. Yeah. Um, it's well, just right now there's there's really nothing funny happening. So turn turn fucking turn off make sense mode. <laughs> turn that off. I want to see yeah. the make sense mode off, and I want to see them just say. I know, I know that's dangerous. I know it's dangerous because, like, I, 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 I'm not sure how it works. I'm not sure how you feed in. They might have said like, in the interviews words. what that means. Yeah, I haven't read it. Yeah, maybe they have. I don't know. Can you like, can you treat it like a bot and like ban certain words from ever coming out of their mouth or whatever? Yeah, but not sure. I want to see them do like, like say, say some of the most off the wall absurd shit, um, and that's what I want to tune into. You know, mm -hmm. that's 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 when I want to start watching. Is when you know jerry uh tells george to you know hit himself in the face repeatedly with a cast iron skillet and, and george does it, it and yeah. and yeah just whatever whatever they can come up with <laughs> yeah um also uh, they added i mean they have certain things certain props in the uh apartments that ha have interactability there's the like, microwave i know every time the microwave gets used the chat just fucking explodes it's, yeah it's insane well I, but I don't know if there's any other things that do that what it, else like in the isn't show it because that? the microwave for the noise for the microwave they just have the ai saying mm, over and over really? and over yeah was oh, that why is that why my chat is standing uh, yeah. right now i think is that that's what's going on i think that's okay. where that noise is from mm, 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 is they don't mm. talk over it it just goes mm. <laughs> and they, they you hear well, it the does beeps. Have beeps though yeah yeah the beeps are not like voices right no no i don't know it sounds like a real microwave beep <clears throat> yeah it's, it's it's wild um I but, was uh what i was gonna say as far as like it's it's longevity goes uh-huh i think it i think it's gonna it probably in my like from from other examples i think it's gonna go the novelty route of like bob ross and stuff it'll have a following i think it'll have a a, a solid following but it, it'll it's going to have, you know, a bell curve for sure. Well, I, I, yeah, I think we'll also, uh, before I jump to that point, I want to say I was looking around their Patreon. They have two tiers. One, it's $5 a month. Then there's one for $1,000 a month. And at $1,000 a month, they're going to create a character based on your appearance. And sometimes you'll appear in the show. And as soon as I read that, I looked in the chat. And it's like, yeah, XQC bought that. And so he's eventually going to show up on the street. So like that will probably also give it a little bit of longevity is you'll start to see uh, folks like that get, get their community into it. A month, $12,000 <clears throat> yeah. per year. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> so that's a little obscene. But the other thing I was going to say is that. But like, I, that's a commercial for him. That's like, here, that's I'm going to hold six yeah. advertising. 60 yeah. seconds of ads. Now I'm going to be on this show for a year. Yeah. Oh, oh the, that's God, like 15 dude. seconds of ads. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm curious for the spinoffs, right? Like, Seinfeld is one thing. Give me Bob Ross. Where he just actually paints something random new. paintings. It's random, it just has random, complete it just random has paintings. Random stuff says during it. Like, yeah. Oh my god, Bob Ross paints AI art. Yeah, that'd be great. And then chat submits the art piece at the beginning, and they vote on like like I want to see a duck wearing a sombrero riding a tyrannosaurus. And Bob Ross is like, today we're gonna do a duck in a little hat riding a tyrannosaurus rex with his little tiny arms. They need to do it. In the art style of Seinfeld, but the art that he's painting is like fucking 10 out of 10s, like crazy ass AI art. To be fair, it would have to be Rob Boss. um, Yes. Because there's no way that Bob Ross's name would do that. But I think Rob Boss could uh, absolutely take Twitch by storm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Copycats will be fun whenever those, uh, whenever it's those spin up. (laughs) Somebody, Jeff in chat says, please just let him rest in peace. I see your don't, argument. Don't do, don't do that to Rob, Bob. <laughs> I see your argument. But I'm ready for the I'm ready for the uh the nothing forever spin-off of of pals. Pals? Or t- oh, friends. Oh, friends, yeah. Uh, okay. There's a lot or, they yeah. could do. I would love to see that. Yeah. They could do AI Mr. Rogers neighborhood. They could do AI married with children. They they could do so many different sitcoms there. I hope they. I mean, did. we have a lot of episodes. They could probably take like everything we yeah said do an AI driven re- three hundred plus yeah dude. <laughs> Why not? I'd love to see that because it would boil it down to like our stereotypical like what we normally say to each other, and I bet I just bet that my AI person would just stutter. And spit like the whole time, just like. Do they? I didn't read any of the interviews, but it's got to be something similar to like a chat, uh, whatever the 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 big AI chat that everyone uses that you can go and like have it type essays or whatever. Oh, Chat GPT. Yeah, it's got to be similar to that, right? Like, just create. Oh, we know it's using it as a backend. I I have no idea. I don't. I don't know. I'm I'm very curious what that would look like. You could probably. I bet you if you went to chat GPT, you could say, like, give me a, the script for a Drop Frames episode that's three hours long. And it would probably figure oh it God, out now, somewhat. Now I have to do that immediately. Hold on. I don't know if it can watch videos, though, so I don't know what it will do if you tell it that. And we're going to find out right now live on air with Co. Oh, apparently I have to <laughs> sign up. So hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never used it before. I never have it as well. Is that an instant sign up? Uh, I was able to sign up with Google. Okay. All right. Oh, God. Why does it want my phone number? Oh, that's so it can also call you and tell you about uh, your car insurance Great. or whatever. Super. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be okay. busy. I just connected my phone to Skynet. Great. Great. Super. <laughs> we love that. Oh, we, you, I. okay. Here we go. Okay. A dropped frames episode script that can run for three hours. Does it know what it is? I have no idea. Oh, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, as an AI language model, I cannot write an entire three hour script for a drop frames episode. Okay. Um, Shorten it. Dropped frames episode script featuring. Oh, carnage. It me, JP, and Ezekiel underscore III. All right, let's see. Anything? Oh, now it's, now I broke it. I think I broke the AI. Oh. I'll I, keep okay. trying as we move on the conversation. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think you do have to go like back and forth with it. Okay. From what I've seen on, uh, on the internets about it. Keep at it. We'll let you know. Or you let us know, and then we'll just stop talking and, and read the script. We'll pass it around, and, and yeah. Anyways. Uh, outside of the uh, the Seinfeld Forever stuff, kind of a uh, <laughs> slow week news-wise. We got a lot of uh, delayed game announcements. Um, Last of Us Part 1 yep. 
PC. This one, a lot of these, whenever I see a, a, uh, a delayed game post, I'm always like, oh yeah, okay. They found bugs. They need something. They need time to work on QA, whatever. But the Last of Us one PC thing, it ends the week after the sh the final episode of the show airs. Oh my God! Wait, real quick. Do you know what Drop Frames Talk Show is? Yes, Drop Frames is a talk show that discusses various topics related to the video game streaming platform Twitch. It features guests who are popular Twitch streamers and industry experts, and hosts discuss various aspects of streaming, including technology, culture, and the future of the industry. Now that could need probably a, pull need from a blurb? Our Twitter, so it knows us. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, I think it scrapes the internet, right? Or does it not scrape the internet? I'm just surprised it has any idea what's what that is. Oh, here we go. Write an episode of Drop Frames. Title, The Future of Virtual Reality Gaming. Introduction. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Drop Frames. Today, we have a very special episode for you all as we dive into the exciting world of virtual reality gaming. Join us today. Joining us today are some of the top experts in the field, and we'll be discussing the future of VR gaming, the challenges that come with it, and how it's changing the ways we play games. Segment one, the state of VR gaming today. To start off, Let's talk about where VR gaming stands. Can one of our guests give an overview of the current state of VR gaming? Guest one. Ronnie. Sure, thanks for having me. Currently, VR gaming is in a very interesting place. We're seeing a lot of advancement. Dude, it's just going. It's just going. It's oh, stop. more and more. Stop, I like my more. job here. I, I, I like my job here. You're, I don't want to be replaced with AI because I. everybody knows I'll be the first oh one to go. God, so, dude. So, uh. How long Stop reading right there, wow. bud. It just, it's <laughs> typing. Like, it's actual type. It's typing out segment three, the future of VR you gaming. Can, uh, one. Just can you going, show it on going, your, going, your camera? Uh, you no, it? unfortunately. It's not on that computer. Oh, but... okay, okay, okay. You're on the... oh, wait, 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 wait. You can Actually, desktop capture or something like that. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, do I... Oh, I don't have that here. Give me one second, give me one second. Okay. Live, no capture. live production within a production. I, I need to make sure I don't show things I'm not supposed to. Sure, sure, sure. I'm gonna scroll over the studio. She, 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 as I was typing, oh, that's flipped. so so if I do it again, let's do a, a new chat. Do and we'll do write. That's not it. Let's write me a dropped frames. This? Nope. This? Frames episode <laughs> featuring Rami Ismail. Here we go. This is how it does it. Today we have a special guest, the co-founder of Lamb Beer, Rami Ismail. So let's get started. Wow. I didn't put that in there. It did that. Hello, Rami. Thanks for joining us today. Can you start by telling our audience a little bit about yourself and your work in the video game industry? Of course. I'm Rami Ismail, a game developer and co-founder of Lamb Beer, an independent game studio based in the Netherlands. We focus on creating innovative and entertaining games for players around the world. <laughs> Lamb Beer is known for its critically acclaimed games like Nuclear Throne and Luftrausses. Can you tell us about the development process and inspired you to create games? Sure. At Lambeer, we believe in creating games that are not only fun to play, but also have a unique design and aesthetic. Nuclear Throne is an... It's literally... It's what? That's probably his wiki, right? <laughs> I think that pulled probably, his wiki. Man. Yeah. Oh, this is wild. You've been a strong advocate for diversity and representation in the video game industry. Can you tell us more about your work in this area? Definitely. The video game industry is in a global and inclusive medium, and it's important that the games we create reflect that. See, this is based on his Twitter, which he talks about this stuff all the time. Oh my God, dude. This is yeah, but where are the wild. fart jokes? Where, where, where are the fart jokes in, in borderline offensive language? Like, <laughs> yeah, they can't. Right, it's a not drop doing the, frames it's, episode I mean, it's not the featuring same. Ezekiel it's not the better. third fart jokes. <laughs> no, no, go. Don't I'm do sorry, it. but open AI policies do not allow the creation of explicit or offensive content. You win this time, Zeke. <laughs> that's true. I can't be replaced. Time. Okay, that's that's enough of that. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just to give you an idea, that's that's wild. Like it it really does pull information from like everywhere and then kind of just slowly amalgamates it on the screen for you in whatever format you just want it to get delivered to you. So it's that's wild, you man. Know, it was I even thought crazier. about that, but but oh, I was gonna say there are coders that have integrated chat GPT into their working. Like you can yeah. you can literally tell it, like write this type of script in this language that can fit this type of medium using this container method. And it will just give you all the code and save you like hours of work. 
Yeah. Um, like it's it's wild. It's absolutely wild. The conversation um, is definitely super old, but man, what what I would have given to have that when I was in like high school English comp. <laughs> just <laughs> give me an essay on so and so uh in the style of blank that's uh you know around 800 words enter like that's 100 oh, uh, a real problem right now chad is saying yeah well one thing also is just like any ai system you you can't you can't just get the results and take them at face value you do have to go through it, them yeah it does sure spit out is, confidently incorrect yeah. things like yeah. people People in chat are, are bringing up the very good point that with the coding and stuff, it doesn't always work properly. Like you have to go through and still make sure that, you know, everything is where it needs to be. And yeah, which is a great point. Still though, well, and I, I would have loved that. <laughs> oh yeah. Listening to that, like it, it gave me like uh, an idea of, uh, or, or it's like a tool that, that, uh, that I could have used as like a, a, when I was doing the hosting shit. Yeah. Or uh, generating questions that the whoever was my guest probably had heard a million times, you know. So like, don't ask, don't don't ask about that. Don't ask about that because you know yeah. they've answered this question three million times. Come up with it would help me come up with something fresh for them. Um, and yeah, there's a a lot of applications for for that kind of shit in the real world. I think. Yeah. Maybe not it exactly, like using it, but like using it as a, you know, a tool. Right. I agree. Hmm. It's definitely a wild thing for sure. Uh, I use chat GPT to rewrite my cover letter. Sure. Why not? <laughs> right? like, <laughs> you, yeah. Why the fuck not? Would be a good use for D&D and general NPC dialogue. Yeah. You could definitely have it do a bunch of stuff. I know... Uh, I had definitely uh, thought about it in terms of uh, this is a really niche example, but I think you can use that stuff for niche things. Uh, you could have it write uh, music for a like bard within D and D that you're playing, so that you don't actually have to like come up with music on the spot. You just have it, right? Like it is essentially on the spot, but you could just have it write that music for you. <laughs> you just read it I, in real time. <laughs> I like the fact that that it that AI is <clears throat> uh, is taking the place of creativity. Yeah, you don't need creativity anymore. Hundred percent. You know, well, look at that. Look at that you don't come up with anything on your own. You don't need to draw anything on your own. It's just, just, it's easy. It makes it easy. Yeah. Hundred percent. Anyways, as long as it exists, that's the big thing. What do you mean? Well, like a, anything AI, AI art, chat GPT, it just pulls from the internet. So as long as it exists, it can, it can be creative there, but you don't, what you don't see this stuff doing yet is coming up with its own stuff, which arguably the most creative people are frequently coming up with their own stuff. So AI right. is never going to replace that kind of thing. But you know, it's, it's, as it gets better and better at what it does, it becomes more and more deceptive. So, you know, it's, it's I, a definitely interesting thing. I'm, I'm very, I, I wonder how many like scripts are being sent to agents and everything in Hollywood right now that are just AI ridden or AI assisted. Well, Very curious. How yeah. That is. Also for the record, I, I absolutely should not have used the word never because you're right. One day it will probably be able to come up with its own stuff. Um, even if it's just taking predefining predefined things and combining them to make things that haven't been done before. Like that kind of stuff absolutely could be done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's gonna be a thing. Yeah, sorry, I was reading a lot of uh, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about this. Mm -hmm. It's oh, interesting yeah. to read too. That's it's a should. super new interesting yeah. medium. Yeah, it's it's very uh very hot conversation, I think, on the internet for sure, especially once you dive into whole like artist AI created art and all that stuff. Uh it gets pretty intense quickly so let's move on with the news uh yeah. we're talking about uh game delays uh last of us one pc port got delayed to march 28th this one uh mm -hmm. one week after the final episode of the show so oh. i feel like that's a marketing change and unless i didn't realize it was done yeah hmm. that's it's that one's kind of weird uh what was the other one uh star wars jedi survivor is now coming out on the 28th 
um, is when that'll launch. And then this month, uh, no, no, March, uh, sorry, April, March. April 28th April. is when it got yeah, yeah. Uh, pushed. Yeah. Uh, and then I think that was there's, it. Nope. There's uh, one more. What's the other one? And it's doing something very interesting. What's that? Sons of the forest, which is the next iteration right. of the forest. They already delayed their game to February 23rd. I want to say, and they've been very quiet until the 23rd. So everyone was expecting another delay. But they announced something different. They said, okay, here's the deal. We don't want to delay our game again. So instead of delaying our game again for a 1.0, we're going to go ahead and release Sons of the Forest in early access. Huh. So what we're going to get is a nearly completed Sons of the Forest in early access. And I, I don't know if they've yet announced um, if they're going to adjust the pricing to reflect that or not. But they are going to go ahead and release basically just what they've got um on their on their release date because they didn't want to delay again mm. and it's been interesting because a lot of people have been very torn on that um personally considering the forest one was one of the best early access success stories ever like i think if there's any company that could get away with something like this it's it's these guys mm -hmm. um i mean forest one was amazing like in terms of of like they they stuck with that game for years and years and years and turned it into something awesome so i i i'm totally fine with them doing that with this honestly it, it, it's kind of like why didn't you guys just do this at the beginning like you know like i, I guess they they wanted to release the 1.0 but just realized that it was a bit out of their scope um also for the record there have been a bunch of previews of sons of the forest and they've been very favorable yeah. like uh they're doing like sons of the forest is doing a lot of cool things they're putting in a new system where there's an ai companion if you play single player and the ai companion you can order him to do harvesting and stuff for you so wow. while you're off adventuring he will like harvest whatever you need, bring it back to your base. You get back to your base and you can like build and stuff and then go off adventuring again while he collects stuff again. So it's, it's, there's some really, there's some really cool things it's trying to do. So if it, if all that works, it's going to be great. Nice. How long uh, was the delay? Did you mention that at the start? Cause like they're there's launching, no, there's no delay. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, I, they're I know they're launching the early access, but like when does it fully launch then I guess is, is what oh, I don't think they mentioned that. Oh, okay. So they're sorry. I misunderstood. I thought that they were just putting it out. <laughs> whenever and then they were going to launch you know a month after that but they're just putting yeah, it in early the, the access one, the 1.0 was okay. supposed to be the 23rd and now what they're doing is the 23rd is now early access and it's going to be done when it's done got it okay. yeah. yeah from their steam page uh it's been a long journey since we first started sons of the forest development has grown to the biggest most complex game we've ever made there's still so much more we want to add items new mechanics gameplay balance more we didn't want to delay again so uh, have instead decided to uh, involve the community in the continued development of this project and keep our February 23rd release date, but instead release an early access. Cool. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's not, yeah, I, I, it's not that different than there's launch and early access, and which is To fine. be fair though, for, uh, Forest One, when they released early access to Forest One, it wasn't a game. It was, it was literally a early collection access, of yeah. game mechanics. Like there was no story. There was barely, there was, there was like nothing there. Um, so of course that one took like five to eight years, this early access we're getting of sons of the forest. Like they were going to release it on the 23rd. So from the sounds of it, like most of the stuff is, it's going to be a lot meatier than when four, I don't, I wouldn't expect like a five to six year development cycle. Like they may, I mean, from the sounds of it, they may get it out by the end of the year kind of thing. If they yeah. get everything in, they want yeah. and that they want to. So yeah. Cool. Uh, mm -hmm. we also had a bunch of live oh, service yeah. games, uh, canned in the the past weekish uh gamatsu tweeted uh apex legends mobile the bigger ones apex legends mobile uh battlefield mobile cr a game called crime site crossfire x uh dragon quest the adventure of die heroes bond echo vr knockout city uh love live which i guess is uh some idol game called love live school idol festival and then Rumbleverse, uh which we've talked about on the show uh considerable amount i would say yeah very yeah. sad about rumbleverse that game was actually fun like i'm i'm disappointed that one's leaving yeah real quick what what is what's an idle game i'm not idle, answering just that to <laughs> go go google it that's a long answer <laughs> the general consensus with an idle game is that it, the, the the tagline is that they kind of play themselves so you make some choices and then the gameplay loop cycles 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 without you needing to like have hands-on stuff on it. And yeah, then you make some more choices. Oh, it's I D O L, not I D L E. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I oh, thought no, you meant I D L E. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, oh, yeah. Okay. Now I know what that is. I played, I played Yakuza, so I know what that is. <laughs> 
Yes. Okay. That does. Okay, have I don't know what an idol. I, I yeah. played the the Hanukkah storyline, so I know what an idol. Oh, that's is. the waifu game. Yeah. Oh, they're waifu okay. games. Yeah. Okay. Waifu games. okay. Okay. That's that's, that's what all you had thought. to say. Well, it's not. No, that I was it, confused in the idol idol. Uh, it's not uh, that I'm like embarrassed of the I'm content. Names. It's that it's a longer explanation of why the fuck idol games exist. <laughs> At least for me. Maybe not for everyone. Um, yeah. I'm still stuck on like, like why why anime is such a huge genre of all kinds of different stories and stuff all kind of looks alike like i guess that's part of the thing i i gotta go part of the appeal I'm, i gotta get out of this clip here uh <laughs> please direct uh all tweets to running back for the dallas cowboys ezekiel <laughs> underscore yes uh, you can find me on twitter at at ezekiel elliott <laughs> I'm yeah. staying out of this one. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. Uh, EA obviously canceling a lot of this stuff. Apex Legends Mobiles, uh, I think, was like received very well as, in terms uh, of like a mobile port, but I don't think it had that much of the the market share. Uh, and so EA was like, "Nah, we're done. We're out. Get us out of here. We'll pull, we're pulling the ripcord." Uh, I think PUBG just dominates the mobile market way too much. That and um, uh, Call of Duty as well with uh with warzone so both of those got canned or are in the process of getting canned um bunch of games selling well it takes two crossed over 10 million copies sold which potentially means 20 million people have played that game which is kind of wild to consider uh just the origins of that game and it being kind of like one of the ea whatever they call their like indie program uh Little insane. Uh, God of War Ragnarok sold I, through eleven on, million. I missed. I missed it. Which game was that? I it takes it. two. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then God of War Ragnarok uh, sold through eleven million copies. No, no surprise there. And there no was surprise. one other. Capcom is that just the like top, the fastest selling uh, PlayStation game of all time. Now, is that? Is it? I I don't know. I saw a headline that said fastest selling, and I or, uh, it might have been God of War Ragnarok, but I'm I'm not. Could not. be. I it's either that I or skim like Spider Man. A lot of things. Yeah, it, it's either that or Spider Man for sure. <laughs> uh, and then that's kind of it. It was kind of a slower week. Just a lot of a lot of cancellations, a lot of game delays, and and not much. Uh, unless I'm missing things, Chad. Anything we should bring up? The uh, um. You do. Are we still talking about dead uh, service uh, games of services or whatever? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. No, that back back for blood like just went. Like it was here for how long? Did and it then die? it's not dead. It's they now then yeah, it is dying. They announced that they're done putting out content for it and they move on to the next thing. I saw that. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the Titanfall thing. Yeah. That oh was right. Cool. Yeah. So EA. apparently here here's the thing though. Everyone said it was a Titanfall like related project but from the sounds of it it was more apex legends right like it was it was it was more apexy like basically i think i i in one of the the leaks i read so take it with a grain of salt but it was basically like a single player adventure where like the titanfall the titan from titanfall 2 was in it but there was also like apex legend champions and you like played alongside them and it was some kind of weird like you know play with your favorite apex characters kind of thing it was not like a it was not like titanfall 3 well, they're, they're the same or something like that they're the same universe though so it mm -hmm. kind of is but i i see what you're saying it's not like yeah they, they were titanfall merging their 3. ips yeah. yeah 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 um yeah square enix was out there announcing that they have uh declining financial things uh they're planning multiple new ips uh new games including new ip so, but I, I feel like they're going to have a crazy year. Square Square has like a history of uh, games selling infinitely well. With like what I think Tomb Raider and then them saying like, no, this was a failure. This didn't do, <laughs> this didn't perform like we wanted it to. Uh, and so I yeah. wonder how much of that is in this, but they're about to have a crazy year with what? Final Fantasy 16. They've got Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Uh, whatever else they put out. Uh, they've got their smaller games. With like, oh yeah, yeah. Rebirth. Um, they got a lot of stuff. I feel like they're gonna be fine. I, I wouldn't read too much into that. Well, no, uh, we—they're gonna be fine, and then they're gonna announce that Final Fantasy 16 didn't meet expectations. Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth did not hit their projections, um, and then you know, 
sell the company to Sony. Yeah, from we, what I, from, we joked from about from the idea know, of selling to Sony, but like, do they even need to do that? Like, aren't they practically so intertwined that that would, like, why? Everything releases on PlayStation to begin with. Same reason we lost Deus Ex, JP. Money. Is that, uh, but it would cost money. them money to get the same thing. No, money. <laughs> Is it is just the idea of like, oh, we could spend money. Oh, spending money. That's a good thing. Money. Yeah, maybe so. Money. Maybe so. Just wait till their NFTs drop, yo. It'd be awesome. God, yeah. That's that's probably why they <laughs> fucking lost money. Because they're just pushing, <laughs> pushing that shit nonstop. Yeah, uh, wait, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Zeke, were, did I, were you going to say something? I felt like you were trying to jump in there. And, am I imagining that? No, I... Okay. It's... it's No, never mind. All right. Uh, speaking of Zeke, Metal Gear series has now sold over 59.5 million copies. That was announced. Kind of crazy to consider that. But I, guess they, the, I mean... It's been a lot of games, so why not, but... Is it just like it, it, it like trickled past the, the 59 million mark and someone was watching going like, all right, we should, we should write about that now. Yeah. yeah. Like it hasn't had a Metal Gear game since, when was it, what was the last five. Metal Gear game? It was five. Yeah. Yeah. And that was how long ago? Five and five was a little messy. Four years, five years ago? Something like that. Yeah. I'm going to say more. <clears throat> oh, survive. We can't forget survive. Oh God, that's that was like yeah, <laughs> fuck, survive. I know, I know we all tried to. God, but... I forgot that survive existed. <laughs> uh, I, oh, I I had oh, forgotten yeah. that on good reason. <laughs> the rest of the world should as well. Metal Gear Survive. Yeah, what a what a nightmare there. Uh, it's Kojima's seventy six. <laughs> oh. Well, it's not really Kojima's, I guess I should say, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise announced they sold 12 million units worldwide. That's what happens when you release a game three times. <laughs> it's going to do well. Uh, and then, uh, did you guys catch the day before uh, trailer they put out? I did. I actually watched the like the gameplay loop. Went through it and it is, it out. Is, what do you think? I I think that it's definitely a game. Oh, okay. That's where the conversation is. Is, is it a game? Yeah, I think it's probably. A game. I am out of the loop on that meme. I've I've just seen like the just the 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 viral tweets about it. Yeah, about like this is not a thing. This is not a game. It yeah, basically the the devs. Okay, it, it in one of the most ridiculous things that has ever been done by a PR company. They first made it seem like a blessing to its fans that they that we were getting gameplay. A few weeks before the release date like we've we've cleared it with the developers after some back and forth and after we you know put some nails through their foreheads they finally agreed to let us show you some gameplay and you know it's just like uh, okay and then when it was just about to release they put up this big thing about how because they couldn't get the copyright because somebody snaked the copyright from them right they were delaying the game by nine months yeah and that's also why they so had to pull this, it from Steam. I, so, so then after everyone was like, "Okay, this is clearly at this point a joke. Like they are, they, they're, there's no actual game." They were like, "No, no, no! There is an actual game, and we will show you ten minutes of gameplay." And that's what came out a little bit ago. And if you watch it, it is just. It looks like a generic zombie shooter. A, a, a lady roll, yeah, a lady running around, and and she loots some stuff and shoots some zombies, and and it's a game. Um, so it, basically you're saying it's the equivalent of the, like, she does have a nice career. The kid who keeps coming up with like dog ate my homework excuses. It's like the dog ate, like I had it all done. It was ready to show you and the Kinda. dog ate it. Sort of. Like, I was, yeah. I was showing a friend on the bus and it blew out the window. Yeah. Kind of. I, I mean, but as you can see, like there's, there's clearly something there. Um, it now, of course, you know, is, is anything there beyond what we see in this gameplay trailer? We have no idea. Like they could have thrown this gameplay trailer together in the last month to show their gameplay. Like nobody knows. 
And that's the problem. They've eroded trust so much with, yeah. the, with the gaming community that even when people, dude, it's, it's crazy. People can watch this and still go, this doesn't exist. And it's like, but you're looking at it. It exists. <laughs> and they're like, nay, that's how little trust I have in this company. I, 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 this is the chat GPT made it. There you go. It was AI coded. Mm. What? Let me pull up the, uh, the original video that they had. Cause that doesn't that look like pretty different. I couldn't even tell you. Let's see. So <laughs> I'm glad someone else said, said the last of ass because, uh, just real quick, <laughs> just a real quick aside. Um, I've been playing uh, Marvel Midnight Suns off stream, just you know, as my as my off stream game. Yeah. And I look at that, and I'm looking at, like all these games coming out. Like they are really, really like games are really paying attention to the ass, and I am all about it. I am just saying kudos, good job, keep it up. Like, give me all the ass, and do not be shy, because that's great. Because Marvel, I, I swear to God, Marvel Midnight Suns especially, ha it's like Tarantino and feet. It's like they really did workshop the asses of the heroes in that game. To, to me, it, it, Zeke, all I heard right there is uh, I don't play MMOs, nor do I play female characters in MMOs. That's what you just said to me. <laughs> okay, like, sure. Fair enough. They, oh, fair enough. The ass game has been on no, point but I, for well, How about this then? <laughs> maybe maybe what time. I meant to say was I'm glad that the MMO ass game is leaking into <laughs> other games that are not MMOs true yeah yeah that's you also know true. like i'll tell you this i don't remember any of the story of near automata <laughs> almost none of it <laughs> because i was like all right log into the game first thing i do self-destruct excellent now i can play the game there you go because it blows up all of the fucking other yeah yeah <laughs> anyway anyways Anyways, <laughs> leaking ass. It happens. Gotta oh, be careful. gotta be careful. You gotta be. You gotta be prepared for anything these days. <sighs> let's talk video games. Anyway, yeah, it's let's been a while. Let's, let's just move to video games. It's been a while. Uh, Zeke, you got a lot of stuff to talk about. We're gonna start with you. Then we're gonna we're gonna take little small little breaks. Does that work for you? We'll do some yeah, uh, sounds... CD Ramathon, and then we'll just insert some some other things in between and come back. That sounds fantastic. I love it. Great. Let's do it. Uh, preface uh, CD Ramathon for folks that aren't aware. And then sure. how do you, are, should we just do, you pick what we talk about? Let's do that. I'm, I'll throw it to you. You can pick about whatever. I'll find the VODs for it. I, no, I, I, I really was, I really wanted to be prepared. I got distracted as, you know, as I want to do. But I really wanted to like have a list of like all the games, all the CD ROMs that I played from from you know day one to now. Yeah, and I didn't do it. So I, I mean, your VOD, <laughs> your VOD archive kind of does that. We've got stuff. Do they? From, okay. Yeah. Twenty. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, we got a lot. Cool. Uh, so CD Romathon is something that that uh, came out of me. I wanted to do a, a theme month, and I I was always jealous of Dan's gaming. Um, who is a friend of mine, of course, but like I was always jealous of him doing horror month because like he always does well, but his numbers really jump during horror month. So I'm like, fuck, what can I do that's like a horror month that you know people would look forward to every year, right? Um so I tried one. <laughs> I tried uh Cocktober, uh, which was uh I know, but it's Wait, it, it's on brand for when me. When did you it's, try it's on brand? This was years ago. This was like six or seven years ago, if if not more. Okay. But uh, it was on brand for me because I, I was playing games that were like uh, overly sexualized, sexploitation, you know, like like uh, Lollipop Chainsaw, where you play as, you know, a cheerleader the whole time. Got um, it. You know, things things that were just like B-movie, over-sexualized, like Russ Meyer movies, um, if you know who that is and you're old. But uh, that didn't, it ended up not going very well. And I'm like, okay, what else can I do? And then... Uh, I tweaked upon the idea of doing an oldies but goodies month and that went okay and then i tried to do a cd-rom game and people just fucking loved it they just fucking love the the installs of it like how how much it brings you back not not playing the game so to or, or as much 
as getting it to fucking work on your computer. Like that that part has so much nostalgia, not only for me, but for a ton of people out there. Uh, and I've we've joked on on probably on this show and definitely on my channel about how like I will install a game for like four hours and then get the game running and then lose half my viewer because that's the fun for a lot of people. Um, it's just watching it like trying to get it to work. Um, and while while Someone, we had a I'm little bit of that you. this year, go in my chat. This this is the perfect description, Zeke, and you should mm -hmm. use this whenever you have to describe it. It's like old men watching construction sites. Oh, yep. Just just sitting there with their cigarette, like their coffee, like retired, like that's gonna fall apart in two years. <laughs> yeah. He didn't didn't secure that trust. Yeah. Uh, back in my day, my supervisor never let me get away with that shit. Yeah. You know? And that's what that's what people are doing. Like when I have a problem with something, I have like 71 guys <laughs> everybody <laughs> everybody has a fucking different work like a, a workaround or a different solution and shit and i love it not only because uh i'm willing to try anything like whatever outlandish idea because because every once in a while like the weirdest shit ends up making it work um and uh but also i relished i relished the opportunity to to scream at people for and yell at people and berate them for when their shit doesn't work when they're wrong okay. um yeah when they're when they're totally wrong or when uh they suggest something that that has already been tried uh, like an hour ago because they mm. just got here like hey did you try this oh mm, love it <laughs> <laughs> love it That's prime but cd romathon uh ended up being a very fun thing because of those those elements not only the nostalgia of the game but the nostalgia of trying to get shit to work um with and you like you got to patch it you gotta uh you know um you gotta like i had you have to download programs that you haven't thought about in fucking years like uh the no it's um it's the something doctor uh, that gives windows 95 256 bit color or 256 colors um it's um come on display doctor there it is all right you gotta download fucking display doctor dude um to get it to run uh you know 256 at you know eight by six uh, uh resolution and shit like that you got to put it on your os um and uh it's just that that's that's the fun of it and it's it's these sites still exist you know these programs still exist for people because people other people love doing that too yeah um i can't believe how many how many like recent posts there are trying to get a fucking 20 year old game to work <laughs> like on on original you know, uh, an original hardware, like game hardware. People have often asked me why I don't like just get an old computer. And the reason why I don't get an old computer and just run it off of that is because sometimes games don't run on, a, a, like run well on one OS. I, it behooves me to have three, four different, sometimes five different operating systems to get a game to run because Sometimes the fourth one is the one. You know, I'll try it on DOS, Scum. I'll try it on 98, and then like 95 with these settings, got it to work. You know, and that's why I can't do it on an old computer. I would love to, but I, it's just not feasible. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why I just don't download them on like GOG or something. <laughs> that's one of my other favorites. Like, why don't you just play it just over there? Or, or if it's not on the GOGs or or Steams or whatever. They said they 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 love to tell you like oh you can just get the ISO from blah blah blah. ISO oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you use I'm, a lot I'm, of daemon tools or demon tools? Do you use that at all for the mounting? No, no. Nope. How do you mount the ISOs then? I don't. <laughs> oh, I, I play point. them off the disc. Yeah, he doesn't. That's the whole point. There's no oh. ISOs. Like it's all it's all off. However, the disc. however, but isn't that what's uh, installed on the disc is just an ISO? I mean, technically an ISO is a data file of what is on a disk. So right. when you mount the ISO, you're faking putting the disk in your computer to your OS. Oh, okay. I see. Daemon, I see. Daemon I see. Tools I see. takes an ISO and makes it like what a physical disk would read in the computer. Gotcha. So I mean, a, well, an ISO, a mounted ISO is the same as a physical disk in the computer's 
line. Got it. Right. So, so. this is this has become a uh, it's it's become a problem and will continue to be a problem, unfortunately, because hardware wears out sometimes if you if it's not taken care of. Like a disc, I don't know the actual life of the of a CD, but it runs the risk more and more uh, as more time goes on of getting what they call CD rot. Now, CD rot, if you're not familiar, is this. See that little squiggle? Mm hmm. A little black squiggle. Now, that is the mylar reflective surface. Not the, it's not the, the plastic surface of the disc, it's the mylar uh, reflective surface that holds all the information. It's moisture gets in there and rots it, meaning eats it it's rotten it's gone yeah so if that happens this disc is no longer usable it is fucked which happened to two of my discs from no bummer phantasm gray and you can see it like it rots all the oh, way wow. through you can see yeah. me through it yeah that's Fair. what happened that's cd rot now what i had to do we can just start here because this was a fun little thing um speaking of isos uh, this is one of those times where I actually did. I downloaded the ISO of disc one and disc seven of Phantasmagoria, which I just uh, recently uh, played. And uh, so I got that. I got the program that I, uh, Im, Imgeburn, I don't know how you say it. Imburn, in, Image Burn, whatever. Image, image Burn, probably. Yeah, yeah IMG Burn image was burn. the name of the program. And... Uh, I had to do this. Remember doing this? Yeah, of course. Writing oh, yeah. on discs. Oh, yeah. Of course. What of course. Yeah. So I had to get uh, not only get a right, excuse me, a writable disc. I had to get a verbatim CD rewritable disc. And I had to get the ISO and I burned it onto a disc so I could play it of course. off of the fucking disc, which is in the spirit of CD Ramathon. And people were like, oh, you download the ISO though. And I'm like, Listen, it was either that or not play it. And I, I would posit that this is actually it, like deeply in the spirit of CD Ramathon because I bet there was people out there who had to do the exact same thing back in the day when their disc cracked or broke and they didn't want to buy an entire game, entire new game for one disc. I am sure there are people out there who had to do that shit. So we did that. We burned it. We we verified it, which God, man, we had patience, didn't we? <laughs> didn't we have patience back then? Boy, yeah. did we! Because yeah. you know, waiting, I had to wait. Like I don't know how long it was, but I I'm, I think it was like a full ten minutes to burn it and verify. And the verifying took longer than the burning. Oh yeah, but, uh, a friend of mine used to burn uh, dual air uh, like DVDs back in the mm -hmm. day and that that shit it took a long fucking time <laughs> like you tried to get the fastest one possible and it got more and more expensive as, as you went up this um, is like early 2000 ish i want to say something like that and, it, and like that that this kind of stuff brings up like shit that we remember like it nostalgic feelings and and memories of me like working at the coffee stand I would get up because it was fuck. I'd get up early. I'd be there at like five thirty a.m. to get the ice and then open the shop by six. So I'd get up at like five. I'd like throw on a hat and brush my teeth, and I'd go out to my computer and I'd set my computer to download three episodes of Six Feet Under, and then I work all day, and I come back. And one and a half of them were done by the time I got back. And I was like, oh shit, man, it's cruising today. The speeds are up today. <laughs> it's going fast. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, Zeke, real quick, like, like that um, kind of shit, for sure. Somebody, somebody in chat asked, is CD Ramathon still going? Would love to tune in. Uh, no, it's, it's the month of January every year. It's the fifth, it was the fifth annual. Uh, so we, I can't believe we've been doing this for five years. Five years. Yeah. Jesus. Um, so it's the entire month of January. Um, the VODs will be up, um, on, uh, there should, most of them should already be up on Twitch. They are. Yeah. Uh, you I have to, them. yeah, go to the highlights section and not the past broadcast because we, we take out the, or Scott takes out the, uh, the breaks, the commercial breaks and 
stuff like that. And, you know, has them in like hour, hour and a half chunks. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, we played, I, this was the, um, I usually extend CD Ramathon for a couple of days. Uh, because, you know, unforeseen circumstances throughout the month caused me to miss days or whatever. So I played it up until, uh, the third so i played in uh, three days into february but uh, i f i thought for a nice treat uh the last game should be a, a game that i played before but someone was nice enough to send it to me on cd-rom so it was worth another look phantasmagoria it's not as like not as like uh mature content as i remember it's it's a lot of like bad jokes and bad acting and stuff like that you don't get any of that awesome like b-rate horror flick stuff until like disc seven <laughs> like up to disc Jeez. six it's just like a fun fmv point and click with and especially this guy this guy is like Please he's like the, the stereotypical McGee. like he was the like he won an award at his community theater it's like oh let's get that guy <laughs> hey hey what's up tootsai abroad coming into my office like he's one of those like stereotypes right and he's got like oh, i talked like, to my mom um, <laughs> yeah exactly uh and he has uh if you look behind him there's an easter egg uh he has like uh um uh swimsuit photos of ladies in swimsuits that are uh from taken from leisure suit larry six a little easter egg that huh that uh yeah i know it's weird yeah. um but yeah so this guy was fun like a lot of it was fun but then the last disc is all just like uh, it's all the gore and all the 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 shit like a demon rips your face in half uh a big like uh swinging pendulum scythe comes and like splits your fucking head in two and shit like that so all of the stuff is backloaded on the very last disc up till then it's just kind of like you know a regular old point and click with some bad acting and fun you know <laughs> it's funny don't get me wrong it's funny but yeah. it's no harvester which man i gotta go i gotta play that again i don't know if I can get the CD ROMs for that, but that that might be the the treat, the the cherry on top for next year. <laughs> if that's I can be find the, it, the finisher, play some Harvester, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, a lot yeah, of, that's that's. Well, I was gonna say a lot of those games end in like ER back then. Like you got Tormentor, Harvester, all of the all of the ERS in the, the, ERS, the late nineties. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Trespasser. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, all of them. Uh, what else? So fa this was Phantasmagoria. Let's do one more, and then uh, okay. we'll jump to something Toa's played or something like that. We'll figure it out. Okay. What What else? Uh, dealer's choice. Go ahead. Just Just oh, you know me. Just let me. Okay. Yeah, just pull one out of the vod. Go be my uh, guest. What do we got? Uh, let's do uh, Beast Within because I think last week is when you were either you're promoting that you're going to go back and finish it or play it, or yep. you're already in the middle of playing it. Let's Let's talk that. Um, the beast within a Gabriel Knight mystery. How now, long did that one take to get running first? Let's start there. Not very long at all. And I'll tell you why. Well, actually, you know what? You know what? It, it would run right away. However, oh. I added some install time and text time on it because, uh, one of the caveats that I will allow, uh, that we didn't have back then probably is if it makes the game more accessible for people or easier to to uh be entertained by trying to get a subtitle track to work so we we spent like a, a good couple of hours Did these trying games ship to in subtitles that? back then no subtitles yeah i didn't think so yeah yeah no subtitles whatsoever so we tried to get tried and tried and tried and tried to get that like uh, a subtitle patch to work and i i think i spent two maybe three hours on it and could never get it to work so just like fuck it whatever um so we, we ended up just starting it from there um but gabriel knight i didn't I, I played like an hour of the first one or something like that and it didn't really grab me for whatever reason people love it and uh people have often said like you got to give it another chance you got to get past it. and it's like one of the better point clicks that they've played and stuff so maybe i just gotta wasn't in the mood for it or something whatever but this game it's it starts off real strong um it has like you know this undertone of like uh uh, uh werewolves like they don't really like come out and say it for a while they're like oh this wolf 
hmm, it's must have, this hair comes from a, a hybrid of something, a wolf and something else, and yada, yada, yada. So they, like, dance around this idea of werewolves and shit, and you're following this trail of, you know, murders, and, and you're, you're, like, trying to put together a pattern. It's a very, like, detective-y kind of a, a point and click. Also, Gabriel Knight, the guy who's playing it, he could give like George Clooney lessons in smugness. Like his fucking <laughs> smug is fucking the gold. Is this Gabriel standard. Knight on the right? Or yeah, he's a he's a long haired guy with, a, with guy. a real with that with yeah. a real kissable lips. Yeah, that's Gabriel <laughs> okay. Knight. Got it. Um, but dude, like his his like Louisiana accent that he puts on, and he's very much like, oh yeah, maybe I'll try that. <laughs> like just fucking it's hard to see with the smug cloud like just blocking him the whole time <laughs> um but like that's fun though that's uh, that's his character and that's very fun it was very fun to watch but i ran into like disc four now in this game you switch back and forth between gabriel knight and um uh oh god i can't remember her name I want I want to call her uh yeah uh Grace is it Nakahara Nakamura Nakamura Grace Nakamura I wanted to call her the name that that Gabriel gives her in the book he calls her like Fujitsu in the in the actual in-game book that he writes huh he writes a book about his first voodoo adventure and he <laughs> names Grace a real person puts her in the book but calls her Fujitsu that's what I want to call her because Fujitsu is a way funner name to say than Grace but so grace is in it okay. you switch back and forth between gabriel knight and grace and that sucks and it's stupid and i hate it because <laughs> because gabriel knight is fun to watch he's on the trail of these werewolves and you go to grace and she's doing fucking history lessons she goes to museums and she looks at paintings and oh, like, they gave her all the boring parts fuck boy did they holy <laughs> shit and not only that but she is an absolute fucking bitch for no reason. She is an <laughs> asshole from the jump to everybody around her. And it's just like, it's unnecessary. Like she's just real fucking mean to everybody she comes in contact with for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but then she, she, she eventually softens up a little bit, but just right off the bat, you're like, why are you so angry? <laughs> like, There's no reason for you to be so fucking angry. Uh, but that's kind of where I stopped playing it was disc four is just her walking from place to place doing history shit. We're learning about Ludwig the second and we just get his entire fucking life story that I could give a shit about. I'm, I was just trying to speed through it. So I get back to Gabriel Knight and then you get back to Gabriel Knight and he's feeding sausages to tigers. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I want to do. I don't want to look at books and paintings and learn stuff. Yeah. I want to feed my white sausage to a tiger. Oh, by the way, it's a white sausage. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, it's a very important distinction. White yeah. sausage. Sure. Yum. Yes. Great. White sausage. Yum. Love it. Uh, but then I, 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 I kept going with it, and it just, like, it lost me. Like, I didn't finish it. Because it, it just got to the point where I was just like, I do not give a shit about this history. I don't give a shit about the relationship. I want more fucking werewolf shit, and you're not giving it to me. I'm done. How many hours in was that? I want to say, like, I gave it a stream and a half. So probably, like, 11, 12, something like that. Huh. Okay. But. That's a lot. I mean, it's, it's six discs. Yeah. Of, you know, yeah, all that shit. And. It just wasn't it wasn't appealing to me like it needs it needs something other than i'm sure there's people who are history buffs who would like it who would enjoy that especially more specifically german history buffs because it takes place in germany um and bavaria and all that shit. so if you like that kind of history and that appeals to you great game other than that like if you want uh, you know, werewolves and, and, you know, a detective mystery story, like less of that. There's less of that. than you. <laughs> All right. That works out for, uh... I'm glad I, I'm glad I checked it out because it does have its merit. And I'll tell you this, if I played it back then when it originally came out in 
made five God. 1995 which is almost 30 years ago now. man that uh, don't say that <laughs> that's so long yeah if i played it back then like i said we had more patience i would have definitely been okay with you know giving it uh more time but now i'm just too spoiled and i'm sure a lot of you out there would be the same if you go God. back to other games from you know 20 plus years ago you go yeah fuck man we put up with this like I, I find myself saying that a lot like shit we put up with this yeah Ugh. it's true it's true uh co we'll take a quick break we'll jump back to see around what else uh what have you been playing what do you what, what should we jump into i finished chain decos okay we haven't really we've talked about it a little bit uh i saw your tweet do you want to regurgitate your regurg yeah, regurgitate your tweet for commentary um, on the game, and then I'll I'll pull up some vods. Sure. Although I'm gonna have to pull up some. <clears throat> Thank um, you for that. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, TLDR Chained Echoes is awesome. Uh, it is fantastic. It it uh, now that I'm done with it, I think it would have been in my top three last year. Yeah. Yep. R top I three, think, really? Yeah, I think it really probably it, it probably would have edged out Horizon Forbidden West for a few important reasons. But um, it is it is an absolutely awesome example of a retro RPG that has like some current day QOL. Uh, the story was phenomenal. There were many, many, many twists and turns throughout the whole thing. The reveals all over the place. The character customization was really, really good. Like uh, you, you have a bunch of characters you can choose from. There's lots of customization in terms of how you use them. You frequently have more abilities than you can use. So you have to par down and figure out what works. There's a, a mech combat, there's ground combat, there is tons of secrets, there's tons of side content, there's multiple ways to easily get around it. You move super quick, so it cuts down on travel time. Um, my, my biggest complaint about the game would probably be that they had the, they have like the glimpse of this really cool gem system, but the implementation was a little bit rough. Um, where you, you, unless you were doing like end game upgrades and stuff, like I, the, the gem system seems super cool, but I just never really got into it because it was kind of heavy handed and not really the Did UI it not on it benefit was you low. that much. Cause I, they I were, felt like early some, on it was, there were, there were some, some really that were serious, good. cool benefits to it. But the problem is, is when you changed a weapon, it penalized you heavily to move things between them. That's why I didn't like, yeah. It had this or convoluted like. system where they had like, like the, the system was just, the system had about, honestly. The gem system in this game is a good example of over-engineering a game mechanic where it would have been a lot more interesting if it were simpler and it were more intuitive instead of like how complex and and the, it is so complex that most of the people I've talked to just don't deal with them. Yeah. And that sucks. I'm seeing that a lot of my It's a super cool too. system. Yeah, it's a super now, cool system. Yeah. Um, it's so, not a case of, of not realizing that you could use them for no. 60, 70% of the game, <laughs> and then finding out on disc two that's like, oh shit, I could have been doing this the whole time. Well, it's not like that. It's kind of like that, funny enough, but you could make that discovery at any point in the game. Like the thing is, is the complexity of the system does not warrant the bonuses you get, is the short of it. And and it's so deep and vast that it's like you never really have the right gems at the right levels you need to do what you want to do. So again, I feel like it 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 would have been if for Chain Decos 2, please. Um, I very much hope they simplify and streamline that system. Um, you know, like it'd be incredible, for instance, if the gem system was independent of your weapons and it was more like a Final Fantasy VII materia yeah, system. That'd be good. But you always had your gems equipped and then upgrading and changing them were passive effects that that were just didn't, it didn't matter what weapon you were using. Like if they were put in a bracelet or a bangle or something um, that your character always wore. Like that would make it really something cool and interesting. Um, and, and again, more importantly, worth the time of really diving into, but it just wasn't. Also, some of the UI stuff was a little less than great when you're buying and selling items. It, it just wasn't really intuitive. But these these are literally like Net small picking. things. Like yeah. all of the meat, exactly. All of the meat of this game was really, really good. And uh, and I was blown away. Like I, I when I started playing Chain Echoes, I was like, ah, you know, I'll try it for a stream or two and see how it is. 30 plus hours later and I'm beating it and I'm just like, damn, that was worth every single minute I spent in that game. And there was a ton of post-game content I didn't do. There was a lot of side stuff I could have continued doing. So it's like the the and for the value for the cost of it, it's just again, it's it's a it's a it's the one of the hidden gems of 2022, and I wish more people knew about it. Yeah, yeah, I I agree too. Um, 
In terms of the oh, funny story. You see those flies right there? Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, I know where you're going. You, yeah, you know about this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the the audience doesn't know. Please uh, continue. I, okay. <laughs> let them so know. So if you see something fun about this game is that every item in the game has a description, and if you see these are called I think they're called box flies. And as you'll see here, these little box flies come up and they take their little boxing gloves and they, you know, drill them across your face and you're constantly getting smacked by these, by, right here, you can see the little boxing gloves. Yeah, they're punching um, you in the face. Yeah, they're punching you in the face and, you know, just all, all right up in it. Yeah. So if you read the description, they drop an item called boxing glove, right? And you read the description of the boxing glove and it goes, after further examination, you actually realize that these are not boxing gloves at all but the creature's testicles. Yep. Worked That's out. one of the first things I saw in the game. Like I played it for like two hours. And I was like, did that just say what I think it said? Yeah. And every time I fought them since then, I just stare at them and I'm like, Whoa. they're foul you know creatures. The, <laughs> I might've said this when I, when I discovered it, uh, when I was streaming it, but that there's actually a uh, kind of precedent for that because that's what spiders do. Male spiders, they 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 do their business on their on their little front hands called pedipalps, and then they they, they get all the, their pedipalps all covered with their their seed. Oh, that's a and that's then the they kind of yeah. kind of punch it into the female. Okay, okay, all right. No, spiders are rad, dude. Yeah, you learn <laughs> learn something new. <laughs> learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you follow that up? I mean, what do you, what, you, what, you don't? That's what you do, <laughs> JP. Oh, uh, I want to know. Uh, someone, someone in my chat first. Uh, first thing, someone oh God, in my chat said that the, that the devs are are possibly working on the gem system. I don't know do if I that's now? confirmed or anything. We'll have to wait till Co puts his headphones back. My on. headphones are on. Say that one more time. <laughs> okay. I was, I was I was comparing my lack of locks. I missed them. Zeke said that the oh, okay. devs are apparently working on the the gem thing. I have no idea. Okay. Okay. So I, it, one guy. It, I when we I say guy, devs, it's, oh, okay. it is one guy, so, right? Like one well, guy made okay, this. Okay, so here's here's how it works. One guy has been working on this game for like five plus years. His name is Matthew Linda, I believe. Uh, he's a super cool guy, and he he was the mastermind, the brainchild, and the person that was pushing this project along for a long time. And it was uh, in the credits. Right? Yes, and yeah. published by Deck Thirteen, okay. um, which is a relatively large publishing company. Yeah. Um, which is a little bit weird because I feel like they should have done a lot more work on the PRs for this game, to be honest. But that being said, um, if when you when you roll credits in the game, there are a sizable amount of people that help in the game. I mean, he did not do every, you know, there was like musicians and people that helped out. So there, there, were, there were multiple chefs in the kitchen. He was just by far the head chef, you know, so. But there, at this point, he has like, you know, he has people helping him. Yeah, okay, cool. Matthias Linda, thank you. There you go. I'm trying to... So I, I, the last time I, I think I told you I stopped right after act one. Act one. Yeah. So like it kind of, there, there's a lot of shit that happens there at the end and then act one kind of starts and it's a little loosey goosey. Compared to the later stuff, it's like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I could, <laughs> like, I, oh my God. I could, I could totally oh see why that would be. Um, but yeah. I, I do intend to go back to it, uh, at some point it, it's, uh, plays very very well on steam deck it's it's almost the perfect steam deck game uh for me at least I, it's super easy just to jump into play for 30 minutes and then put down until the story kind of grabs you then you have a hard time putting it down but yeah it's also on game pass for anyone curious uh that wants to check it out and then co i think you also it's 30 bucks that's what it runs default on like yep, steam i believe so let me double check that real quick cool do, do, do chained echo 24.99 so it's 25 bucks oh is it on sale or is it that's just the price um, everything's always on sale on steam isn't it um, true but in this case it is no it is not on sale it is default price 24.99 there you go oh <laughs> so the the someone in on a steam forum said like was meant was talking about the, the gem system yeah and uh the developer uh, responded saying, thank you for all the feedback. I will look into making the crystal system smoother. Other things have a bit higher priority, so please don't expect it in, in the upcoming patches. Cheers. <laughs> there you go. So, he's aware. They're they're aware of it. Um, oh, the other thing was, uh, how because you've been playing it for a while. How long? How many hours did it take? Uh, a little over 30, I think. Uh, my total, oh, okay. I thought I it was going to be way longer than that. But 
It can be. There, there is absolutely the side more stuff. content. There's yeah, there's yeah. tons and tons of side stuff. Uh, thirty six point one hours is my playtime, okay. and that was not doing everything. I know people that have that have spent fifty plus hours in the game doing everything. Does it do the uh, classic like? jrpg ultimate weapon thing for every character like does that all exist towards the end in a form okay i don't know what that means but okay <laughs> it sounds spoilery it, in the it, answer it, so well i mean it it it, it does it's, it has its take on that yeah. okay got it cool cool is it on game pass it's still on game pass or was on game pass I think it, it is, is. yeah it still is yeah. okay i got it yeah. worth it uh you want to talk some Hitman? Should we do some Hitman? Yeah. Oh, dude. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You another, intro it while surprise. I find the bot. Okay. Hitman Freelancer is a, a, it's like a mini expansion to Hitman. But what it does is it takes something that always would have worked well in the Hitman universe and it, and it puts it in the game essentially. And what it does is it adds a roguelike component. So it is intuitive. It is well done. Uh, granted, there are some weird things about it because the game is so big. Like, you know, sometimes you'll get mission things that conflict or you won't have the right equipment or the or the person won't go in the right path to do what you need to do kind of stuff. But overall, I have been having a blast with it. Um, I'm probably going to play it more tonight. And I played it this morning. And the, the premise behind it is that you have your, your, your traditional Hitman levels, which are already big and have tons to do. You start in a random location. You have like a persistent inventory where items you take out, very similar to Tarkov, you take out and then you can bring it back in. If you die, you lose it kind of stuff. And you have a list of sub objectives. You can see the blue ones right up there in the top left, yeah. um, which change based on what contracts you get. So you can kind of whittle them down to like a group of stuff you want. You then have main things to do. Of course, it's Hitman. So you've got your hits in the mission. And, um, and basically the premise is that you work through two base missions and then you have like a boss mission essentially and then you do three missions and a boss mission and if you lose on a boss mission all of your progress resets except your persistent inventory which which you can then still use to go through there um there's also like a master level uh there's a meta system hardcore called your mode? master level oh oh no it's a hardcore no, mode yeah no no master level is basically yeah. like you're constantly getting your master level and what's cool about that is as you're getting more and more master level stuff your hideout is unlocking and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So you get access to like bathroom and lounge and upper floor and outside and garage. And those give you access to more like things you can go and do in the hideout or customize with cosmetics, or in some cases go and pick up actual items and weapons you can bring with you. Um, the boss battles are pretty cool because you don't know who your target is. You know, traits of your target. Like uh, they're wearing a hat and a mustache with black hair and they are smokers that are doing a secret meeting. And then you have like a bunch of perspective targets and you have to follow them around and like take pictures of them and, 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 and figure out who's who, um, like that old game, guess who? And then you have to figure out how to murder that person. And in a lot of ways you have to do like a specialty murder. If you want to get more, uh, man butts, which is, you know, they're called Merces or something. Mer man butts. They're called Mercers. Funny enough. They gave them yeah, Matthew weird Mercer his own credit. After, yeah. We, you know. we just call them man bucks cause, um, <laughs> you know, Matt's got enough going for him. Yeah. Um, there's no, also all sorts of little stuff. Like there's. There's certain NPCs that you can you can kill to get more man bucks in the game, and they're like doing their own thing. There's safes you can crack and hack to do that too. Of course, there's the sub objectives. It's just a very cool take on Hitman roguelite. I, That's what it is, and it yeah, works. I I will go as far as to say it's the best version of Hitman to exist. It is one of the, it is absolutely one of the best versions of Hitman to exist. I would I would it's agree with really you. It's really good. Like, Hitman has always catered to a gameplay loop like this. Yeah. Like the idea behind Hitman has always catered to it. This would be the perfect kind of thing, and they could make a huge amount of money just by like adding map packs to this mode. And there's get, already like, 21 maps. Insane. And there's al there's already a bunch of maps, absolutely. <laughs> That's wild. Um, but yeah, it's 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 very fun. It's really cool. I'm not even the biggest Hitman fan. I'm usually the kind of guy that plays them through once. I get my story and my stuff. I'm not the kind of guy that goes back through and plays, you exactly. know, all the different ways and getting all the kills. And this mode is still a huge amount of fun. Yeah. So I'm yeah, saying strongly recommend if you even, if you've played through the Hitman games and you're like, yeah, that was pretty fun. Try this. Yeah. That's, that's, and the technical term, by the way, the full name is Hitman Worlds of Assassination. Yeah. Cause they re released. So there's, there's been three Hitman games of this engine. Yep. They re released them all to be combined into a singular game, Hitman World of Assassination. 
and then this is the new mode within that game. Exactly. Yeah. Because I, I don't, when you stream it, do you get a ton of people saying like, how do I buy, what game is this? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, little, it's a little conflicting. Some people is, can just yeah. download it for free. Some people need to buy extra packs and stuff. Like the whole, it's interesting because if you look confusing. at the way that Hitman, the way that Hitman has been released over the last decade, they've tried all, first they were episodic, then they were full packs, then they were whole games, then they were extra add-on packs to the episode. Like they've been trying all sorts of things to figure out what works. And um, now basically there's just like a big umbrella over everything and you just get that and you're good to go. Yeah, it's also on Game Pass, as Chad is pointing out, another Game Pass game. Even cooler. Yeah, Th this is like, for me, this is the definitive way to play Hitman. Uh, I was the exact same way I would play through the game once, and it's not a game that is, saying a game is meant to be played a certain way is kind of weird. I feel like this it's game is- It's a sandbox is, game. It, it it's is meant to be played game. over and over yeah. and over in these levels. Yes. But for the story, <laughs> like, I would do it once, and I'd be like, cool. And then I'd put yep. it down. This one, it you pop into a mission, you can get out of that mission with under a minute. If you spawn in the right area and, or go in with the right weapon or find the right guy with the right outfit next to you or whatever, you can get in there, kill the guy and immediately be gone onto the next level. And it Dude, just is constantly I, feeding that stuff and it's awesome. I had a mission today, it was a boss fight and, okay. I, and I zoned in. I literally walked around a corner. There was one of the prospective people there, looked at her. She wasn't wearing earrings or something, so I marked her off. Yeah. Walked around the other corner. Uh, one of the marks passed me into the bathroom at a little secret meeting. I was like, oh, okay, we'll just follow her. <laughs> follow her down into like the main concourse of the area. She starts smoking and eating. She has everything she needs. Boom, she's the person. So I literally walk over to the door to exit the level, unpack a sniper rifle from my briefcase, just right there in the corner, just. <laughs> leader kill turn around use the door i'm in and out in two and a half minutes yeah i was just like that felt so good it's great man it was, just, it was great it was awesome it was I, fantastic. I didn't even use a disguise i was just like okay, i had two ridiculous i mean I, the game is just a comedy in a lot of ways when it comes oh, to yeah. just killing people but i had one where i spawned in the level and after you finish a mission you get a essentially a loot box that has three random items in it and you can choose one and so I got a remote explosive from my like quote unquote loot box. I went into the next mission, spawned on the side. I, I forgot what level it was. Spawned in an area, saw the target up in a window and he was pathing kind of on this L-shaped window. 30 seconds in, run over there, throw the remote explosive into the window, set it off and then just grab a little bike and ride off. And I was out in under a minute. There you go. And it was Out great. <laughs> it yep. just felt fantastic. Another thing that's super cool about this mode, it, it, is, it, it is very anti safe scum yes which caters to this game so like there have been so many situations where normally i would just hit f9 or load my oh got discovered hit f9 right. load my game but because you can't do that it's like well i guess i gotta kill these guys and figure out what the hell i'm gonna do and that has led to some incredibly cool situations like uh today i was in a house a dude a dude spotted me i killed him the whole house got alerted i there were like three guys coming up the stairs I quickly got the disguise of the dead guy, put him into the closet. The door is opening with the dude to kill me. I walk by him the other direction, and then I go into the bathroom while the three guys who now have no idea who I am because they're just disguised are like, where'd he go? Where'd what he go? Because there was no body, no person. And meanwhile, and then I just walked out and finished the mission. Yeah. And it's like, this is awesome. There's awesome like, and that's stuff the kind like of, that. That's the kind of thing where if, if I was not in this mode, I probably would have been like, oh, discovered, escape, load game, you know, that kind of thing. But instead... I had to kind of like, you know, figure something out and it worked. Yeah. A lot of times it doesn't though. And that's just as entertaining. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> so, the game is pretty difficult. Oh yeah. Especially I don't, I don't know anyone that's finished the game. You don't know what game. to do. Yes. Yeah. If you, I think Bikeman was getting close last I heard, but he's been putting I, a yeah, lot of Yeah. I'm sure chat it. will Zach tell was us. was also but... getting really good as well. But it's, it's the kind of thing where. It's hard. The game, you can absolutely play this without having played any Hitman games. And I got that question, I'm, yes. I'm getting that question more and more. Can I just play this mode? I've never played Hitman, can I just play this? And the answer is absolutely you can, but there's no question it's going to be difficult, very difficult. Every map has things that you can just know or find out. Oh, it's this map. So I know that this guard will go around this corner and then I can get that disguise, which will allow me to get access to all these places. And that's just stuff you learn by playing. Yeah. When you're doing it for the first time, especially like there's a couple maps that start you in like aggro trespassing territory. Yeah. It can be real, real tough. Um, there's a couple, there's a couple known combinations of like 
certain type like alerted maps on Colorado and stuff like that, where it's like, if you don't really know what to do, it's kind of a game over. <laughs> like you, you kind of got to do things and like kind of got to do them quick. Um, or like two guards are going to come at you from different directions. You're gonna have no place to hide. Yeah. And they're both going to trigger like a, an alarm for the entire map. So it's uh, it can get rough. And every so often there are things where you are going to go, okay, that was bullshit. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but that just That's comes the to the fun of the fact that it's roguelite. It's roguelite. Like you can literally start in almost any place in the map when you start it. So crazy shit's going to happen. It's not perfectly balanced. Um, and it does kind of cater to, you know, the more, the better, you know, the map, the easier it's going to be to escape really tough situations, Yeah, obviously. Um, yeah. but to end this little part, you don't need to have played any Hitman to enjoy this game mode. Not at all. If any, it, 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 if you want to play through the story, there's 21 different maps and you totally can, you'll know those maps a little bit better going in, but like hundred percent agree with you. You don't need to play any of it. Yeah. Oh, also side note, cause this threw me off a lot at the beginning. Un the only kind of unfortunate thing about this is that all of the maps have tons of ambient commentary and ambient objectives that are specifically designed for the story that have no bearing in roguelite <laughs> mode. So you'll like be sitting there listening to some person's conversation about, oh, it's his 27th birthday and they're preparing it in the chef room and all this stuff. And it's like, oh wait, that cake doesn't exist because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> like, like nothing they just said is pertinent to anything happening in but the that, roguelite. I, I find that just, stuff just to be hilarious. Like it, oh, it's it, funny. It's yeah, yeah. So but it's ridiculous. just a lot of times, a lot of times it'll sound like it's giving you some yes. kind of cool secret to do in the game. And it's just like all about killing someone you don't have to kill. Right. So it's just kind of like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Just keep that in mind when you're playing it. God, I didn't on, take that stuff out. On this level that we're watching right here, I had the most absurd. So I had a proximity mine. Proximity mine, you throw it, they have to walk into it. I knew the path of the guy. So I was sitting on the other side of a wall, lobbed the proximity mine over the wall. He didn't get close enough to it, so it just knocked them back and knocked them down. As that's happening, the second target is sheltering behind me, like literally three feet behind me in a bush because she heard the proximity mine go off. So I just go over, snap her neck, <laughs> and then walk right back over to where I was. And then the guy that I threw the proximity mine with paths over towards a ledge and his guard behind him, like goes and gets a drink of water. And so he paths behind this one little pillar and line of sight is big for people being able to see you in this game. The second he passed behind the pillar, I just shoved the target over the wall. He dies. And then I walk out of the map and it's there like that type of stuff is, is so incredibly fun to experience and how absurd it can get. Uh, I actually think that Zeke could have a lot of fun. Oh, with this totally. Game. Yeah. Because, and Zeke, you totally should try this. Um, there Definitely. is so much fail state activities. Like there's so many things that happen when you fail. And, uh, and I would, I would love to see you do that. Repeatedly. It's a great you know, streaming it's, game. Really is. Honestly, yeah, one of my, one of my favorite memories, uh, of the past few years is, uh, when I was playing Hitman, there's there's been a few moments with Hitman, but uh, one of them was like, I don't remember what mission it was, but I remember like, it was on a movie set and you had to kill the the guy who was on camera, and yeah. I just ran to him, broke his neck, and then ran to the exit. I was like, <laughs> oh shit, I won. Yeah, uh, that stuff works. And that shit, like that's how I would play this. I would definitely start each level by going, how can I get to them and break their neck the quickest and get out. Yep, and that's. Definitely, like, I would not be a silent assassin. No suit only for this guy. Well, like, no, or no, like, you know. The one thing whatever. I will, <laughs> the one thing I will say is the, the little sub things. So, like, Co here, for example, in this VOD has uh, to kill someone with throwing an item, to poison the target with a sedative. Mr. Crowbar. And to poison a guard. And so if you do those, you get better, you get more. Much better. Uh, man bucks. If you can if see, you man, okay. exactly. If you can see the man bucks payout is 200 for the mission, but then thousands yeah. if you complete the sub objective. So they give you a lot of reason to do those and do them properly. And and that, those, I think where the game initially, I don't want to say failed, but where I lost interest is because it was too open of a sandbox. Like there was too many things to do that I was a little bit overwhelmed sometimes. This one, giving those parameters, make it so much more fun because you immediately go into the mission with so an idea in mind. So much more focused. Yeah. Yep. It's with so like, much more I need focused. to do this. And what's even and cooler it. is whenever you start a campaign, you pick between dossiers. Like there's eight different dossiers and each one has a subsect, like nine to 10 objectives 
based on the play style you want to do. So in Zeke's case, he could pick a dossier that literally caters to carnage, you know, breaking people's necks, killing with throwing melee axe. weapons, yeah. uh, throwing axes at people. Or you, there's like a whole dossier that's, you know, about poisoning and making sure you're not seen and stuff like that. The one I prefer is the executioner one where it's like get kills with silenced weapons and get get long range kills and, you know, get a bunch of headshots, which I always fail. So, you know, stuff <laughs> stuff like that. It's uh, it, it very much lets you cater. It, it lets you create your own experience in terms of what you want to get out of the, the missions. Yeah. Yeah. So I was While still keeping to... it random because you have like a list of 10, but you can see you only get three per. Right. And then as you progress through the game, you start getting specialty ones, too. Where you, there are these three golden envelopes and those are like extreme objectives like you know you like a timed thing where you can't be seen you have a two minute timer every stealth kill you get gives you two more minutes and you have to complete it in the, that certain amount of time or never be seen and never use a disguise like all sorts of crazy stuff but yeah. those give like three to five thousand when you beat them so it's crazy yeah yep. definitely rewards so, better players for sure <laughs> so this more importantly this doesn't penalize you if you fail which is awesome yes Sorry, very Zeke. true so this is under, like, if I was going to get it on Game Pass, it's under Hitman 3, right? The it's under Hitman within... World of Assassination. Oh, you'll okay. Want, okay. You'll want World of Assassination. And I actually think okay. That okay. it gets a little more confusing because I think, is World of Assassination the deluxe pack? Or is that the World of Assassination? I think Hitman 3 <laughs> might have combined them all as well. Yeah, Chad is saying Hitman 3 is now oh, World of it is of all under 3. Okay. okay, so if, if you, you were you right, search, then, yeah, if you search for Hitman 3, it's $70. Well, well here, here that should it, have it, everything in on, it. In Xbox on the Xbox Live app or Xbox whatever Game Pass app. Yeah. Um it says World of Assassination games included. Hitman 3. Yeah. Add-ons included. Hitman 3 access pass blah blah blah, blah all the maps and all that shit. So that's probably I'm that surprised part. it doesn't say like under World of Assassination it doesn't say like, you know, Free freelancer answer. mode. Yeah, it doesn't. It just, there's, oh. no, there's not in there. You're actually right because if you if you go to the Hitman Three Steam thing, you can't buy Hitman Three. You can only buy Hitman World of Assassination, which has okay. three and then all the extra stuff for it for seventy bucks. At least that's how it is on mine. Um, and then you can also get the World of Assassination Deluxe Bundle. And so far, all I've seen in mine, the Deluxe Bundle just adds like more cosmetics and stuff you can put in your area. I don't know if it actually adds like extra stuff freelancer by the way just to be clear freelancer the roguelite mode was a free update yes so so you do you, you don't you don't buy freelancer if you own hitman 3 it was an update to that i just didn't know if that was if they had changed the name of that but it looks like hitman world of assassination is what you get unless you have game pass which i think you do in which case you can just get off game pass yep that's, yeah that's what i'm doing right now yeah cool also if you feel like really being crazy zeke there's a VR uh -huh. mode now in Hitman and has been yeah. for a while. And it's it's first person and <laughs> it's it's about it's it's as janky as you think it would be, but also okay. endlessly hilarious. Like <laughs> that one's that one is on my list for when I finally get my VR stuff going. Like that it's on jank. List. Do it's you like jank? Yes. Yeah, you, you throw, you're like you, yeah, I think and breaknecks. Like, I don't know about the breakneck thing. I do okay. know that you throw stuff. Like the, you have to physically do that motion. Uh, I also remember when it came out, pretty much every streamer that was playing, it was saying it was like the fun factor was in how jank it is and how just like busted in a lot of ways. But if you're looking for something else outside of the freelancer mode, there is a VR mode that is free. You don't have to pay anything extra for it. So it's good. It's definitely, it's like I said, when we first started talking about it, it's the best way to play Hitman, And I hope it's the direction Actually, I guess it's not the direction they're taking it because they're making a Bond game now. That's the next game the studio is working on is the the brand new James Bond game, whatever that is. Can't wait to see how many ways we can kill Bond. <laughs> yeah, like that's the thing. Do you, do you think from like an IP side of things that they're going to let you have Bond just get destroyed <laughs> like so many different ways probably i mean like how how could they not you know like i mean yeah. I, I think i think freedom of choice is something that hitman is known for so i'm sure i'm sure all the wackiness from hitman 3 will probably be in that game in spades i guess if i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest i i don't think it's gonna be too much different than hitman 
Like, I think it's just going to be, I mean, they could literally just make a different main character in Hitman 3 and it, and it would feel kind of like a James Bond game if you think about it. I guess Use the biggest thing. Use gadgets and explosives and, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I, I agree with you. I, I th For some reason, when I think Bond, I merely think like, oh, that's going to be a famous actor. And like most agencies won't allow a famous actor to have oh, their make a new IP. Guy. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably be its make own a new guy. New guy. It's own yeah. bond, whatever that is. I hope, uh, and I hope they just kind of. I would be baff It'd be honestly, it'd be a waste of money if it wasn't. There's been so many different bonds anyway. Like, how would you pick the white, right one? Just make a new guy and focus on the funds on making the game better. You know. Yeah. 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 Hope so. Anyways, that's Hitman Freelancer. It's worth it. Go play. We're good. It. It's good. It's a good game. Zeke, we return to you. CD Ramathon. Okay. We're doing a break. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no more breaks at all. Uh, so if you, oh, yeah, we're okay, cool. Yeah, all right, just we'll go Noted. through every three hours. Okay, yeah, so if you got any questions or anything, do you, uh, Zeke, where are we headed? I right chose back. last uh, time, you choose where we go. Okay, let's do, we'll leave you guys uh, with me. did we talk about trespasser? We talked about trespasser already, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. we mentioned that. Okay, last okay, week, yeah. um, let's see, we could do where in the world is uh, Carmen San Diego. We got Doom you 2. Bet. We got Steven Spielberg's director's chair. We got Alone in the Dark. We got Max Oh Payne. my God. Any of those. Uh, let's do let's do director's chair. How about? Okay. All right. Steven Spielberg's director's chair. Oh boy. How? Oh man. <laughs> what even is that game? What do you, what do you okay. even do? So I don't know if y'all remember back when uh, CD-ROM games were kind of the, the 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 thing to get. Like they had a lot of money behind them, and they could get some fucking names, dude. Like they had A-rate like celebrities doing their games with them. And Steven Spielberg made a game. Oh, I don't know if he made a game, but someone made a game with Steven Spielberg's okay and him in it. Uh where you actually, it's, I gotta say, this game is more real than I cared to play more than one day of. Because Meaning like it he's is talking like, about how to be a director? Well, he, he gives you like the, 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 the gist, and you actually have to like, the first time through is what I thought the game was going to be every time, but no, it is not. You direct this film, uh, and it's like, I don't know, 12 minutes long or something like that. Okay. And what you do, you do all of the, you know, you do the sound effects, you do the editing, you do the, the Foley, uh, or I said that, uh, you do the music, uh, you make the posters, you make the, the tickets and stuff like that. He comes and sits down and talks to you about like making movies and shit. And what <laughs> it's on the box. Guess who's in it? Well, none other than Quentin Tarantino. Oh yeah. He's in the game. Saying um, what or doing what? He's an actor on the movie that you're directing oh, and, and editing and shit like that. So, and they have these these people, the, the people that, that pop in, those are real movie, uh, they're, they're like real producers, real editors, real sound designers. That uh, Steven Spielberg was like, hey, you want to, and, and of course, it's like Steven Spielberg's on the phone, like, yeah, I'll do whatever. I'll be in your game. Sure, no big deal. Um, and they 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 pop on pop into the the scene whatever you're you're getting tutorialized to do they'll come in and say like hi I'm Dan Grossberg I edited films such as Aladdin uh <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark and you know they'll, and they're real people that what did these the things hell? I know um, and then they'll tell you like editing is one of the unsung heroes of the movie business and da -da -da, and they'll give you like a little thing and then they'll you know give you little tips on uh what to, how to how best to, to edit or add sound or whatever um so the first this, time are you through, announcing your directing debut now for the the zeke universe the no Ze the z3u no i am i am absolutely not okay because <laughs> it's what is this motor roller <laughs> this is my assistant okay sure this is my my personal assistant the pa personal oh, assistant oh boy who should be doing my job because all she does is tell me how to do my job. Like that's, she's the tutorial basically. What the hell? So, uh, she like you, you take the pager. The pager is basically your, uh, like the question mark cursor. You like click on the question mark and then you click on something else to tell me what it is. That's what she does. You take the pager and you click on something 
And then she goes, this is a editing booth and this is how you do this and all this kind of stuff. So the first time through, it takes you, you know, a good couple of hours to edit together your first 12 minute thing. And you start with the script, you write, you, you, you are with the writers of the script and two actual movie writers. I can't remember the names right now, but two actual movie writers are there like, hi, we're blah, blah, blah. We wrote this movie and this movie and this movie. And, uh, you can either choose to like edit together the script yourself or just hand it off to them and let them do it. Weird. But like after the first movie, you, you get the script, you construct the scenes, you uh, uh, do the, the, all they, all they give you to start with the first mission through is a master shot. And the master shot is basically the wide shot of the whole thing. So you can like always cut back to the master shot. Yeah. If you need like, whole you know scene but for the first time through that's all they give you the second time through there are scenes with like nine camera angles and you can cut in between them like a real fucking movie (laughs) and it is fucking tedious it is really really tedious it's like a the real process you watch the same scene 20 fucking times through (laughs) to get two minutes of film and everybody who's ever worked or been on a film set. They're like, yep. Yep. That's, that's, that's how this is. And people were coming and going like, I can't watch this anymore. It's too too much like my real job. And I'm like, I, yeah, it's fucking like a job. Yeah. The first time through was very (sighs) more video gamified. You know, it was, it was easier. You didn't have so many things to select from. You only had the master shot and stuff like that. Um, but this the second time through, it's the same movie, but they give you more scenes every time you play it. Every time you play through it and edit the movie down, they give you more scenes until eventually you have all the scenes. And how they how they uh, justify it video game wise is the first time through you get I can't remember what it was, but it was like your budget is like five hundred and twenty thousand. That's your budget, and they like every take retake they throw like random like delays on you like. All right, we're going to shoot this. And then, like, uh, the screen will come down. The costumer's like, hi, I'm the costumer from fucking whatever movie. Uh, it's going to take another 45 minutes before, uh, you know, the costume is ready for this lady. And you're like, what did you choose? Shoot a different scene. Wait for them to be done. Or blah, blah, blah. And if you like, <laughs> whatever you choose, it, it's like, ding, money. Ding, you hear the cash register going. <laughs> it's like, that cost you more. Delays sounds pretty accurate money. to I know, know proper Hollywood. Yeah, it's way more accurate than it should be for for you know fun value, I guess. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's not exactly like it is editing a movie, but it's pretty goddamn close. Um, in that I didn't want to play it anymore because it felt like I was working a job. <laughs> this feels um, like the the inception of the idea of masterclass, like twenty years prior to them. Figuring out what masterclass is, yeah. Let's get Steven Spielberg on on the game, and we'll have you. We'll have the player choose all this inane bullshit. <laughs> Put it out as a product. It'll be great. That that was me. Just uh, I was making the ticket. By the way, my director's name was Dong Howard. Um, that was me. Um, of course. Yeah. Uh, a classic Dong movie. Yeah. Uh, the funny the one of the one of the funny weird things in. Is when you're you can you're making I'm making the credits. Oh, these are like, credits. I thought you were selling making the movie tickets. These are credits. No, okay. this in in this area you make the poster, you make the movie tickets, and you make the end credits. This okay. the, in this little section, you can choose not to credit people. <laughs> oh no! It's like it, the, oh I, god, it's like game like, dev all over yeah. again. <laughs> would you like? These I'm not shitting you. Would you longer. like to credit the writers? <laughs> and I said no. I don't want to credit the writers. Oh god! So they didn't appear in the credits. I was like, is there going to be any repercussions? And there is none. You know why? Because Steven Spielberg's attached to the product. <laughs> well, I better not make a fuss. Oh, to be yes, fair, god. numerous twit longers against your company is is quite a. I mean, that's that's a consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but everyone knows it's Steven hard to get Spielberg credited presents. in a dong film, right? Like it's, it's tough. It's yeah. you, you gotta you gotta be talking. Dong to is game. hard but fair. Hard yes. but fair. Yeah. Everyone knows that. That's the tagline. <clears throat> hard exactly. but fair. <laughs> Jesus. So okay. 
you go, you go through all this and you're directing people like like Quentin Tarantino, uh, Penn and Teller are in it. Um, of course they are. Why? Sure, absolutely. Uh, guess guess who else is there of Friends fame? Uh, Jennifer Aniston is in it. Yes, indeed. I wonder I how much this it's costs weird. to get made. Like that Don't those know. those people were. I'm. Did this come out like peak Friends fandom? Because that must have been. Very expensive I, for Jennifer Aniston to be in this. Hold on, let me let me grab this. That that's that's like multi. I really want to know the budget for this. It came out ninety six, according to someone in chat. That's kind of wild. I got I okay. Let's see if we can find the budget. Steven Spielberg's director's chair. Steven Spielberg's director's chair. Big bucks, big stars, big problems, and yeah, it has. Jennifer Aniston, Quentin Tarantino, Penn and Teller, and of course the man himself, Steven Spielberg. Weird. Um, and it's on it's on three discs, as you might imagine. It's got a, it's got a lot of a lot of full motion video. It's a lot of. Uh, <laughs> what a weird thing. The rev I, yeah. I'm trying to find like the budget for it. It says the virtual budget of the game, which I guess is part of the game, was forty million. So that's what you had to work with in the game, Zeke, was forty million for that, everything. Yeah. That is the end product. So <laughs> ah. your first time through, it's like five hundred twenty thousand, something like that. And then the next time through, you get like, I think you get seven million. Is the second time you 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 make the movie, and then it it just builds up from there. I I did I never finished the second time through, um, but you get more uh more scenes to work with in the second time through you get more camera angles to work with so it jumps exponentially from one the first time through to the second time through on how much fucking time it takes if the first time through took you an hour the second time will take you fucking four i guarantee it if you and if you want to make it the same quality as the first one like you want to put all the things in the right spot as best you can edit it together holy shit because you you not only put in like all of the the edits which take forever the camera angles you go through every camera angle so like if, if your fucking scene has seven camera angles and the scene is five minutes long that's thirty five minutes of footage that you have to edit together like a real fucking movie and that's just one two minutes or one five minute scene it ends up being like a twenty minute movie or something like that at the end. So every five minutes is like, if you know, half hour, 45 minutes just adds up. And not only that, you have to come in under budget. You have to uh, deal with delays and fuck ups and problems and all kinds of shit. Uh, you have to deal with Quentin Tarantino, just like licking people's feet for no reason. I'm kidding. That's not in the game. <laughs> the um, early days of Quentin. His early but you do time. get, you do. Okay. The, all that said. The game is more real than I cared to that I cared to keep playing. It got it got way too real. I will say, if they made a game where it was just you watching pieces of film and adding the foley, the sound effects, that shit was by far the funnest part of the game for me. Okay, <laughs> was, that goose you watch the effect? movie through and you're like, okay, there's a sound coming up here and ding dong. Okay, now the clock. He's he's looking at his watch. But I bet it still ticks. So you put the clock ticking, like tick, 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 tick. And you put all these like random weird, like they only give you so many sounds. And the funny thing is, the sound, the sounds they give you are not like, I don't know if they give you like 25 sounds, 23 of them you would never use on this movie ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like a slide just a, whistle. Just like, a stinger. there's no dun, reason dun, for there dun, ever, dun. Yeah, there ever <laughs> to be a slide whistle in there. <laughs> All right, let's put a a, a fucking like a a, a, a um like a an alarm for like a nuclear explosion. Like everybody get out of the building. Like nothing like that ever happens in the fucking movie. You never need it. Oh man, I uh, uh, but I, yeah. So that that would have been fun if you went, had a, just a game where they give you movie clips and you have to try and add the best sound effects you can, and they had some scoring system. Got it. I was trying to find like what the the like actual budget for the game was, uh, and then the five minutes oh, yeah. that I started, oh, yeah. I couldn't find it. I found some notable quotes though. 
independent.co.uk is uh, reporting this was, when was this? 2020? Yeah, this came out August uh, 2020. Uh, they said, among the notable choices, including shifting Tarantino's delivery from Manic to Calm. Does he have Calm delivery in the game? Or or is that a, that's a delivery, or that's a choice that you can make? Is that yes. what they're saying? Got it. Okay. There, there is one big thing I want to bring up as soon as you're done. Okay. Or making specific scenes uh, either comic or dramatic. You can also choose whether or not Tarantino's character is executed, which might be what you're about to bring up. Uh, in 1996, Aniston said that working on the project was a, quote, last minute thing, explaining, quote, I was doing something in New York and my agent called and said Stephen had requested me. She also said that she had to improvise, quote, a passionate kiss with Tarantino, uh, who oh, she yeah. had never met prior to working with him. <laughs> so, like, that sounds like some real 90s shit. <laughs> oh, I remember that. <laughs> it was... Look at that dude. It's weird. <laughs> it was fucking weird to see him like kissing Jennifer Aniston. I'm like, oh, what? They must have had to have, like paid her extra for that or something. That's fucking weird, man. Okay. okay. So this is me making making the the poster for the movie. And as you can see, probably <laughs> it's wild. What the hell? Most of the shit that you can use that they give you, the clip art they give you, it has nothing to do with anything. Like, it's it's so unrelated to anything close to the movie. You just got to fucking pick shit. Like, a beach scene, a fucking brick wall. Like, you know, ugh, it's just dumb. Anyways, okay. uh, I guess the beach scene makes sense because, you know, there's end different endings and stuff. Now, all of that aside, the game they should have made with this yeah. actually got made. <clears throat> and it's free. It's free to play. Um. It is uh, Mole, Mole Industria, M O L L E Industria dot org slash director's choices. It is a free to play game in your browser where you take all the movie scenes, every single scene from this game. What the hell? And, and you play it like an FMV game with choices, like QRT choices or uh, QT choices. So you play, you don't have to direct it. You don't have to edit it. You don't have to do anything. All the scenes are there. You just can pick the path like a regular FMV game. And that shit was fun <laughs> because you get to see all of Quentin Tarantino's like, that's one of the choices right away in the, this version of the game. Do you want calm Quentin or do you want manic Quentin? You can pick one, like sure. pick the path. It's a very, it's a just like pick your path to the end of the movie kind of a thing. And that shit was fun. That shit was fun as hell. Huh? Okay. Um, because you can see, like going through it, I saw all the scenes like from the movie and Quinn just, he's fucking off the rails. He's just, he's a fucking lunatic. Uh, <laughs> and it's great. Like he's a, he's an over actor. He, he is just like, he's loud. He's, he tries to be funny and he's not, but that is in and of itself funny. Yeah. He was on a podcast recently that I watched and it was exactly what you just described. He's, he's a wild person, but also yeah. restrained in some weird ways as well. It's character without a doubt uh was this game easy to get running zeke or was it a pain was it was it worth it i guess is maybe a better way to phrase that i i don't remember struggling with this one um oh i love the fun i don't remember did there. we uh, I, I guess i'll ask my chat like did we struggle with this one it's 96 so i'm guessing we had to do it on windows 95 which you know windows 95 has its problems but it's 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 more reliable Okay. than other windows versions i would say um it was easy i think okay yeah i don't remember i don't remember struggling a bunch on this one i think we got it to run on windows 95 because i already had the display doctor uh 256 color uh oh. and resolution upgrade so that's, that's, that's another thing fix. about cd ramathon like previous previous tech shit shows kind of like you know, you got shit to, to help you out with other like games that in the future. Yeah. So like, if I hadn't have got that, that that would have been a whole thing trying to figure out how to make it run right. But sure. since I already had the fucking Display Doctor, me made it pretty easy. Makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, if you guys want to uh, check out the vods, obviously I have the vods. But if you want to see all the sh all the craziness, there's that that website you can go to. Uh, Mo Mo 
moleindustria.org slash director's choices. Weird. It's a free thing. Try not to crash it. Okay. That's why I'm not putting the link in. We'll be back in CD Ramathon soon. Co, anything else you've been playing you want to chat up? Uh, playing through Stalker again. Stalker's amazing. Yeah. It's Stalker a great one. Time to do it with Stalker two out this year. Yeah, I'm playing Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Okay. Which is um with the Lost Zone Reclamation Project, and it is incredible. All right, you played awesome. through that a while back, right? Am I- it is my most played franchise on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are, is this three? Then are you on three playthroughs or two? Five. Five playthroughs throughout. Okay. Jeez. I think I I think I played it five times in my ten years. Good five. Lord. Maybe this is four. I love Stalker, dude. Sure. Phenomenal. Why not? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay. We've probably spoken about it then on the show. Go watch <laughs> one of the other four yep. times. We're doing Stalker and Clear Sky and then Call of Pripyat and then um, getting ready for two, hopefully this year. Yeah. Very excited. Uh, what about the, excited. Also, well, go ahead. What are you about to say? I'm about to say Deliver Us Mars. What were you? Deliver Us Mars. To? Yeah. What? How yes. is that? I, I watched Deliver the Us Mars. Uh, like, launch trailer for Ooh. it. Oh, that does was... sound good. No, 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 that's a good oof. Okay. So Deliver Us Mars, it's it's like a indie, it's between, I'd say, indie and double A. Um, the voice acting is phenomenal. The voice acting is really, really, really good. Um, it is essentially a walking simulator that has like some light puzzle and and movement elements between like the major reveals and things like that. Um, but it was a lot of fun, but I have to say this is a a very message heavy game oh. and it is one of those games where it's like the message is not sunshine and rainbow and unicorn farts is it save the um, earth or we're all gonna burn in hell <laughs> earth is already earth is already dead in this game oh, um okay yeah earth earth is dying essentially it's it's undergoing des- uh, desertification and um it is oh. it is it is a very bad situation and uh without spoiling too much of it it is it is a a very questionable attempt at possibly saving it. So it 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 delves into some very interesting questions and Ooh. it kind of presents them but doesn't answer them. I strongly recommend if people are interested in Deliver Us Mars that they play Deliver Us the Moon because this is a direct sequel. Um and together Deliver Us the Moon right into Deliver Us Mars is a pretty great storytelling experience. How long do you so, think that is playtime wise? Uh, maybe with both of them, I'd say like 20 ish hours. Okay. So, so there I mean, is some could, length, yeah. yeah, it's, it's not, it, it, there's some length to it, but it's not by any means like a slog. Yeah. But, uh, it is, it is a, a very, very cool experience. I, I was, I, I'm kind of, it's kind of unfortunate. A lot, not a lot of people played it. it just kind of went under the radar for, for most streamers and stuff. I was looking forward to seeing other people's reactions and like could barely find anyone else playing it. Yeah. Um, but it's super worth the playthrough. Um, it, it is essentially a walking simulator with some light gameplay elements thrown in there, but it's it's definitely worth the ride. Huh, okay. I'm, I'm the, I, like I said, I watched the like launch trailer for it and it looked pretty, uh, what's the word I want to use? Competent? Like it, it looked like a very well-made game. It looked pretty, oh, yeah. everything looks sound in it. Uh, mm-hmm. It looks and sounds great. It, it doesn't have obviously like AAA resources. So some of the animations are janky. Some of the models are, are, you know, a little questionable. Some of the, um, some of the facial stuff is, is not perfectly lined up, but okay. again, the, the level of, of voice acting plus like the interesting bits of the story and everything absolutely make it worth it. Okay. Like it is, it is, it is, it is a hundred percent worth, worth checking out. Is this by chance on game pass as well? Let me, I'm I don't know. I don't think so. Like- it is. I don't think it is. Twenty five bucks on Steam. Sounds like that, that price is fine for you. Twenty five. Okay. Uh, I think so. I think some people might say it's a little short for that, but I I certainly thought it was worth it. Yeah. Okay. And it is not on Game Pass from a quick glance. So I wonder if the first one is though. Interesting though. I I super worth it. I might, I might check that game. I've been playing a lot of games. Uh, like I, this I would offline. definitely check. I would do deliver us the moon first and then do deliver us Mars. Okay. Yeah, if right. you're planning on playing deliver us Mars, it is totally worth playing the first one. Cool. The deliver us the moon was, is I think I'm pretty sure I played that one. You're not thinking of the sprite. Yeah. 10 game, hours. Right? I got, I got 10 hours on record and you I got, remember really enjoying it. 
Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Explain super cool. That. And Deliver Us, Deliver Us Mars, Zeke, is the next one. And it released yeah. like four days ago. It's really okay. good. I think it's on, it's on my wish list, I'm pretty sure. Definitely, yeah, definitely is. worth a playthrough. Cool. Okay, cool. That um, will definitely be coming up for me now that I'm not, oh. not you know, deep in CD-ROMs. Yeah. And the only other little game that I, it's not, I, we don't really need to talk about it, but I'll definitely like bring it up. I tried Hi-Fi Rush. I saw, I was, I'm looking at your VOD stuff right now and I saw five yeah. parts and that makes me worried Ooh. that you didn't enjoy it. It's not that I didn't enjoy it. That's not I a good way to say. <laughs> it's just a hard okay. Really? Like, I, I, yeah, it was a hard okay for me. Like, Where did you stop? I found, uh, after the second boss, I want to say. So you, um, after, okay, so you after had a good Rip, chunk Rip, of the mechanics. Rip, Rip, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rekka. I just, I mean, all all the combat scenes felt very samey. Um, once I got the mechanics down, you know, it, it wasn't that much. It wasn't super engaging. The, the comedy was like okay for me. Yeah. I wasn't really, I wasn't really super into the comedy. The music was great. Um, Did you play it, it just, DMCA mode or or no? Yes, I played DMCA mode. Okay. Um, it's just and, and like and and like I was telling chat because we had a long talk about this. It's not that I didn't like it. It's just, I, I felt like it was a hard okay. And like, it came, it came to the point where I was sitting down thinking about what I wanted to play. And I was just like, I'd rather play stalker, you know, like I'd rather spend, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm limited Fair on enough. time and I'd rather play stalker. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it's not like I played it and it was bad. I just, I played a little bit of it, but like I got a really good idea about what it was. Um, and another big thing about it is even though I had fun playing it, I am, and, and I need to really like the gameplay or really want to know where the game is going. Like really like something there. And to put it bluntly, I could not give less of a shit of this main character. I just, I, he's just like totally uninteresting <laughs> to me. He definitely just, is I have, a doofus I have no, the start. Yeah. I have no care about, yeah, at least to the point I got to, there was nothing that was like, I need to see where this is going. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and because the game, because I didn't love the gameplay, it was okay. It was good. It worked. But because I didn't love it and I didn't really care about the story, I was just like, ah, I'll just go do something else. Yeah. Um, this, but that being said, I totally get why people dig this especially considering it was dropped on us. Uh, a lot of people in my chat, a lot of people in my chat asked me to keep playing it. And I had to like apologize to say that I wasn't <laughs> clearly it's there's definitely something got there. a beloved fan base. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes. Clearly, the, clearly there's something there. The I, part I just, where you dropped so off, it, it does sound like I'm catering to what your experience was, but it, the beginning is a little slow. Like you don't mm -hmm. get the parry mechanic till after where you stopped. And the parry mechanic oh, yeah. is like, I don't think I ever got the parry mechanic. The parry mechanic yeah. is the game because you parry to the oh. beat in a lot of ways, of in almost all the ways. Um, and it adds like the depth and complexity that you might have been looking for that might have been lacking for you. Um, and like character wise, the main character is definitely a dipshit in the first two ish hours. <laughs> like, there's no doubt about it. Uh, he's, well, I think he's I mean, like, I was designed liking, to be that. Yeah. No, knowing that it does get better. I mean, I could maybe, maybe I should keep, keep trying. It, I mean, that, you know? that's, like, I, I'm, I, I'm not trying to sell you on the game. It. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I know. Well, well I kind of did, I guess. Yes. In the first place, <laughs> I was going to say like, yeah. well, you, in a way you are, but, um, and, and, it, and again, I didn't dislike it. I just didn't really see, I didn't think it was going to progress past what I was already getting. So mm. knowing that it does, that is a factor, uh, you know, that is something to consider. So maybe, and like I, I even say, I have a high fi rush command. I even say in the command, I might return to it at some point. Yeah. I just, you know didn't really want to you could uh at that point you able to do a cozy stream and check it out more yeah i mean if you down. if you put uh what two hours hour and a half into it it's only like a 10 11 hour game so it's it's a stream or two to finish it uh but yeah like parry mechanics huge you also get more assist um i will say i remembered when i was looking through the controls because i changed my i think i i originally changed my dodge to be like dark souls um and I remember looking through the controls and I was like, oh, there's a parry button. Yeah. And then I, I think I, I think I even asked Chad, I was like, did I miss a parry tutorial? Like where, where like where, I can't, I don't think I can. So yeah, that answers that question. Yeah. Uh, and there's also the, did you unlock the chip system? There's more like character. Uh, I got like the move system stuff. Okay. Chips like is the, like an additional mechanic to. Oh, I don't think I got to that. that. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does okay. open up a little slow. I, I can, I, I think that was like a pretty common uh, criticism of it that I saw in, in all the discussions. So I still stand cool. by it. I, I think the game's absolutely 
fantastic. I I have watched yeah, it. Maybe a lot maybe I'll have to try it again. Yeah. It's uh cool. it's a good one. I'm glad you tried it though. Zeke, you're still planning on playing it, right? This next week, I think is when you said you're starting. Yep, yep. firing it up on on Tuesday, and uh, it's nice that 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 there is like I haven't heard a dissenting opinion yeah co's the first and, yeah nice <laughs> yeah. nice to hear one yeah um but and from the sounds of it i stopped early <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it honestly it, remi it, it reminds me of like i've done this several times where it's a it's a beloved game and i have to i feel like i have to like justify why i don't like it yeah i don't like, like that I've, I've had to do that many times <sighs> on this very show I hate that shit dude <laughs> It's not a fun feeling. I, I try not to, but I still find myself doing that. Like, uh, um, oh, Gabe, like Gabriel Knight. That was like a, a huge. Beloved, like, yeah. Everybody was like, "Oh, you're gonna go back and finish like Gabriel Knight? Come on, man, Gabriel Knight's great." And I have to find. I have to like. I find myself going like, "I can see how." Blah, 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 blah. You have to like, like baby it. Yeah, yeah, sure, I can, but like, I don't like it. Can that be okay? That be enough? Like, it, <laughs> it's not for me. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear like it's not perfect because <laughs> I I want to it's because it looks fucking amazing and I've, I've I've heard nothing but good shit about it. So graphics uh, are great. Music is ten of ten. I I will yeah. absolutely give it that. Yeah. Yeah. And also uh, I'm sure. not I'm playing it on Tuesday, but I'm also uh, playing it with the original music. So DMCA's probably oh. won't be. Probably so apparently you're in for even more of a ride because that yeah. the original music you get like prodigy and nine inch nails i went and back like and watched of all of the major scenes with the proper the not proper with the the licensed music in it intended intended music say. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of weird because the the stuff that the game made for like streamer mode follows the same and this is gonna be an eye into my my uh musical uh knowledge it follows the same like rhythm and everything of the licensed musics, licensed hmm. tracks in the song. So like uh, when Nine Inch Nails Perfect Drug plays, they're very similar. And what you get in like the Nine Inch Nails Perfect Drug and then the like streamer safe music. It's uh, it's it's weird and also wild that they were able to go and create music with the same exact like vibe and rhythm and and style and all that stuff. Um, and it's probably why those songs were good to begin with because they were emulating a source material that was proven to be good. Uh, but yeah, I, I will, uh, I'll probably tune into that Zeke or at least catch the VODs. Curious to see your, your thoughts on it as well. I think, yep. uh, I think Dan played it. I don't know if he finished it though. He might've, uh, he might've dipped out, uh, similar to Co pretty early on. Not sure why though, but anyways, that's Hi-Fi Rush. Sounds like we'll be talking about it again briefly next week because zeke's gonna play a little bit of it i was like maybe i'll try it tomorrow morning and then i looked it up and it's like oh wait dark and darker comes out tomorrow morning yeah dark and darker starts back yeah that's that's my my uh mishap i'm i'm gonna try to play this week there's also steam next fest starts tomorrow as well with all the demos yeah so i might Ooh, check out some demos some or demo maybe play days. some dark and darker we'll see yep we'll see i also played spell force how was that what what is that I did a two hour sponsor stream for Spellforce Conquest of EO. And the best way to describe it is it is like what would happen if you took a 4X game and combined it almost directly with an RPG. So there's like a whole bunch of, of, of like fantasy elements. You have this tower you're developing. Um, there's like zones of influence, but there's full tactical combat like you would expect in, in like a pretty diverse, like Age of Wonder esque 4X game. Um, huh. If you are a 4X fan, if people like 4X style games, I would definitely check this one out. There is a lot of very cool stuff in it. Um, I actually had a pretty good time. I was debating going back to it the next night. Um, and it, I think I ended up going back into Hitman because I kind of fell in love with that. But if I did not have Hitman, I probably would have played this for at least another night. Yeah. Weird. Okay. Yeah. I feel like, I had to look it I feel like we need to watch a little bit of footage of this to see what it actually is, but it, it plays a little slow. What's a 4X game? Uh, 4Xs uh, are, ex what is it? Um, expand, explore, explore expand, expand. Uh, exterminate, and... Exangue. Exploit. 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 Okay. There we go. Yeah. So basically the idea behind a 4X is that you have like a, a big, big map and you have little armies that you control and there's all sorts of points of interest around the map and you're, you're constantly exploring huh. the map, conquering, conquering other people, 
gathering resources and uh, all the while developing your own um, cities and, and outposts and things of that nature. There's a full story in this game with quests. Um, you have multiple heroes that each have their own thing. There's like a running quest sign that goes through it as well. Oh, nice. uh, there's, you can see tons of little like, like specific things and synergies that happen inside of your units. Um, different units have like harvesting abilities so you can get different elements off the map. And it's, uh, it's big and seems pretty deep. There's a whole level up system. So all your guys level as well. You have to, you gain resources every turn that then you have research spells with. You cast spells, uh, summon units, hire units. So it's, it very much is a a 4x game but there's just lots of like little rpg elements in it as well sweet i gotta give it up to uh renee's for my chat because i feel the same way like four z's is more like like <laughs> they're definitely of a <laughs> certain that got me it that is not great, for everyone yeah, yeah. i'll, I'll yeah. be i'll be blunt like even even when i when i told the people that gave me the sponsorship i was like four x's are generally not my thing like i like playing them but like i generally i very rarely dive into them long term um, you know, like they're, they're kind of cool to see what they're doing and see if any of them are doing some unique stuff. And this one is for sure, but generally four X's are not only a little slow for me, they're a little slow for streaming. That's what I was about because to the say. They're that, not good streaming. The thing games. about yeah. the thing about four X games is that you kind of need to be plugged in with them to really know what you're watching. Um, and then even if you know what you're watching, usually the, the gameplays are so kind of vast that you don't really, unless you follow along the play through the streamers doing, it's really hard to drop in and drop out of them. Mm. Um, so. That's that's one of the reasons I stopped streaming like Civ games and things back in the day. Who uh, but, who published or developed it? Because I saw you did a sponsored stream, and I think Dan did a sponsored stream as well. So uh, they, THQ uh, Nordic, I believe. Ah, yeah. okay. And then, so they had and some then, marketing um, from there. Got it. Yeah, I, I let me let me confirm that. I'm pretty sure it's THQ. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, yeah, because if this was just like mm. a, a you know indie thing to come out, on yeah, THQ Nordic wouldn't mm -hmm. have that type of budget. So cool. Yep. That's that. But yeah, uh, if again, if, if you're a Forex person, I definitely recommend taking a look. Awesome. Uh, I this will be the last thing, and I well, I, I did play a little Steam World build. Uh, Steam World's that oh, uh, that game that yeah or ser franchise thing IP maybe I guess is the word IP. for it. Yeah. They, they have Steam Steam World Dig. Yes, yeah. they have a lot of Steam World games. Mm -hmm. uh, that game seems like it's going to be fun. It's also strange. This game straight up. I I say this in the most positive way possible, but it's going to come out negative. They like straight up stole the UI from Anno 1800. Uh, <laughs> like the way that everything feeds. Th this is the second part of the game. The This part, the top part of the game is like, it's Anno 1800 UI, like through and through. And it's the best parts of it for me. Um, so like there's two parts of the games, the SteamWorld build, you build city on the top. It's got all of the workflows that you would expect. Certain things take 15 seconds. That feeds into a 30 second build. So you can oh. support two of them type deal. Um, and you know, different resources. You, you start with like workers and then workers, I forget the workers go into the next tier and then you upgrade that house just like Anno. So uh, you build the house, then the house becomes a worker tier. Then the worker tier becomes the next tier. Then that tier becomes the next tier and you get more and more people. You need those type of, X amount of the tier to get X tech building, that type of stuff. Um, and so that's all the top, right? And it's it's more simplified, I would say, than Anno in a good way, where Anno can get- Yeah, Anno, Anno it can gets get, crazy. Yes, it can get very overwhelming very quick. This one- is a good word for it. Can get overwhelming, but they did a better job, at least for me, and, and maybe because it's I played so much of Anno that it was uh, easy, like, progression uh to understand but it seemed a little bit more approachable i guess in that regard so you're doing all that type stuff up here and then uh eventually you unlock the like steam world part of the game the second part of the game which is you just press two and now you're underground and you're digging and you're mining things. And these resources go back up to the top and they allow you to- And this you know, is all happening in parallel it's with It's all the at the part. same time, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're, you are, you're like- You are strongly selling me on this game. It's 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 a demo still. It's, it's only about an hour-ish, maybe a 90 minute demo. It's pretty cool. They, they have some Sounds good stuff cool. uh, going on. So you, you basically like set where you want your different bots to kind of dig to 
And then as you get that stuff, it unlocks, you know, more resources, the next uh, tier, uh, the next whatever to, con to continually progress. Eventually also, it becomes kind of tower defensey down below because there are enemies that attack you. That's not in the demo, but it's in some of the stuff that they've promoted where you have to build like defenses from different things, trying to, you know, stop you from mining and stop you from digging. Uh, and I didn't see any of that because it's not in the demo. Serious dungeon keeper vibes. That's I saw that so much in chat that it's fifty percent anno, fifty percent dungeon keeper. I never played dungeon keeper, but I am so saying, here for that combination. Yeah, everyone was <laughs> like, "Oh yeah, awesome. that's dungeon keeper through and through," which I never, I I can't confirm or deny that because I've never even seen that game. Um, Zeke, have you ever done dungeon keeper on your on your retro game stuff? Oh, you totally should. Oh, is it super it old? Is, it's the original is like bullfrog level old. It is, it is such a great game and they've tried to recreate it. And I still, I'm one of those people that to this day thinks the originals are some of the best. I, yeah, I saw um, that a lot in my oh chat man. when I was playing. Oh this. man, that's awesome. And they all said like, it's yeah, this actually awesome. it looks super fun. Um, but it's cool. Like I, you just, you looked away right when it transitioned. It is literally like you press two and it's a second to go down below into the mines and then a second huh. to come back up. Um, uh, and that's cool to see that there's no like long, laborious loading process. It's just, the reason I looked away is because I'm downloading this. You said it was the demo you played, right? It's the demo. Yeah. It's, it's, you can fit into a cozy I am stream. I'm downloading easy. it right now. Yeah. Well, dude, with next fest, I have a whole thing now where I do demo days. I spend the whole day. That's what I'm doing tomorrow. Best, yeah. Yeah. The best demos from chat. And we just go down a list. Yeah. Uh, I would do it tomorrow, but darker, darker, darker you yeah. son of yeah. a bitch. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, I, I'm very much looking forward to the demo days. When, how, when is next fest starts tomorrow Tomorrow officially? starts tomorrow. Yeah. And goes till awesome. maybe the following Monday. Cool. The, the 13th or 14th or something like that. So, Oh, if it goes, if it goes to the 15th, that's right to returnal. Uh, chat saying 13th. So that would be 13th. one week. Yeah. Six through the 13th, usually a week. Uh, so I played this. It was good. It's about 90 minutes. Steam world dig. If anyone, uh, wanted to check oh, that out. Yeah. <coughs> I guess dark, dark and darker is part of next fest that makes sense yeah. it is yeah yeah uh and then this is actually i've i've played this game a ton off stream uh against the storm didn't one of you play oh this? yes i did i absolutely did i played it when it was very, very early this that i this, didn't do all of it man this game's incredible <laughs> it is it is like the perfect chill game is how I would describe this. I, I had like really zero stress while playing this game. Uh, and I played about four-ish hours yesterday on stream. I played about three-ish hours for the tutorial. I started up a second save last night off stream and it, it like, it truly steals time away from you. Why? You just, you sit back and just- oh, No, 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 no. Why, why a second save? Oh, 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 so I, the, off stream? yeah, so like the world persists, uh, in the stream game because you, okay, it's like, you didn't want the stream line. to miss anything. Yeah. I didn't want the stream yeah. to miss anything. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's cool. A better cool. way to say I, I didn't know. I didn't know if you learned something and you were like, I need to restart or something no, like no, no, that. No, 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 no. Uh, okay. I mean, I, there is, it, the game is very large. Uh, yes. It, it has a very, um, cool community on Twitch where like people are excited when people are streaming this game because they have literal hundreds of hours in it and they're like yeah this game i had to i had to delete this game because it was stealing my life like <laughs> i was doing nothing but just building and and i had to put it down I had to, but i'm here watching the stream so maybe i'll redownload it tonight like maybe this looks pretty good maybe we'll do that uh <laughs> i'm that type of shit uh so to describe what it is it's a roguelite city builder and you hear that and I heard that it's like, that sounds real stupid. Like what the hell does that even mean? <laughs> How does that make any sense? How could you mash that together? They made it work. Like you, the goal of the game is to go into each one of these procedurally generated maps and fill that blue bar at the bottom before the red bar fills at the bottom is kind of the quick and dirty of it. The way that you do that is by making your, uh, you know, city happy by giving them the certain, all those little blocks there on the top left. Those are the three races. There's four in game currently. You can actually go and vote on the fifth, which is, I want to get to how incredible the developers are on this because they really deserve to be noted as such. 
uh, but I'll do that in just a sec. So you kind of fill all, and tick all the boxes. Each map is uh, RNG in terms of what's going to be on the map. And certain, building, certain buildings do certain things that you don't want or you do want, depending what's available on the map. And so I don't, I'm only five-ish hours, so I can't name anything off the, one building will do jerky, which is a food, uh, wood, and something else. Another building will do jerky, water, and something else. And so if you don't have a good source of water, then you want to go with the other one. And so those are the type of choices that you're going to make. And as you're progressing through the map, the game gives you unlocks that are random and you can actually unlock, unlock more unlocks through the roguelite system. When you finish a map, you get resources that then you go back to like the main city and you choose these different things. And I, I don't know, there's a hundred different things that you can unlock. There's like 30 different levels that you can unlock things in. Um, it is a, I, there are people that have played this game for hundreds of hours and said they barely scratched the surface of how deep it is. Uh, each level probably takes, at my skill and my knowledge, it was taking me about 90 minutes to two hours. And I was playing on like times 1.5 speed. You can speed it up to... Three, I had to look at the UI, uh, 3x speed, so you can kind of go through this stuff. Um, Progression-wise, what you're seeing here, obviously you chop down the trees. You tell the people where to uh, chop down the trees, and that unlocks more of the map in that fog. Within the fog, you can have more resources. You can have buildings that you can go and take that then give you a certain type of resource or a certain item or something. And then there's also uh, like larger fog areas that are, and I forget the terminology, they're essentially more like dire and they can have really bad stuff in them that you have to endure is like a civilization. But if you do that, you get rewarded uh, usually with like really good things. Um, and so that's, you kind of like pick and choose where you want to grow your civilization, how you want to grow it, the fastest ways to grow it, while also, you know, having some sort of like Sim City, which I'm honestly pretty terrible at because I have no idea how the game works in that regard. Apparently, you don't even need roads for the houses because the people never go to the houses to begin with. You just need the houses to exist. And so, doesn't matter. You need roads. All those roads there are just pointless need waste of land. Nope. Nope. Looks good. <laughs> nope, don't. Nope. That's it, a big date. If it doesn't look good, why even do it? Yeah. And so then you have these, which are small little mini objectives that'll give you more unlocks throughout the level. Um, and so essentially everything I just said can be culminated in like, it is a nonstop, always changing, but ending city builder. So it's like if you played a game of Anno or Sim City that was condensed down into like a 90 minute to two hour situation that when you finished, you got more unlocks, you got more buildings, you got more races that you can bring into your civilization. You just got more. And you just constantly do that over and over and over. And you get to choose where you go. So there's there's multiple biomes. This is like the most basic biome. This is another biome that uh, was to the south of the main city. And when you're chopping down woods, uh, the, the, the trees around the edges, you get different things from that or a chance to get different things from that. Uh, and so it it is like, it's the perfect chill game for me. Uh, the reason that I went back and played more of this yesterday is because I was getting frustrated with Hitman because I'm bad. Also because the controls are a little annoying on PC when you're learning them for the first time, just because of how the keybinds are set up. Hold another story. It's a me problem, not a game problem. Uh, and so I jumped in this. I was like, I need to chill the fuck out. And then I lost track of time and ended up playing for like five or six hours uh, and started playing again after I went and got some food right after I ended the Now, stream. looking at this, is like looking at a, a, a modded WoW UI. It's very, yeah. It's really, it's a lot. Now, does it, yeah. it does it give you like a good amount of... The tutorial's like, great. Like, like, is it? Okay. It's The tutorial unlocks things very slowly, allows you to, to learn them, uh, and allows you to understand things. That being said, there's a lot of things, a lot of times where I would look over at chat and people would be like, 
Uh, yeah, you want to you want to highlight over that and then press right on the D-pad, and it'll tell you what building you need to do that. And I never saw that in the game. It was just like little quick, you know, things, tips that chat was giving me that were very beneficial. Um, but for the the core, the meat of the 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 game, the tutorial's pretty good. It's also kind of long. I want to say it's about two ish hours or two and a half hours. Um, okay. And then uh, to talk about the developers. Every two weeks, this game gets an update. No matter what, they push an update for this game. And those updates can be super big. They can also be pretty minor. But every two weeks, without fail, they push an update for this game. And they have been doing this for a very long time. Uh, when you open up the game, you can click Roadmap. And it shows you exactly what they are working on in the order that they are working on. And when you should probably or can expect them to deliver on said Roadmap item. Then... They're adding a fifth race. And to show you like how involved the community is, when you open up the game, it says vote for the next race. They put up three different choices and you get to just choose what the next race that they're going to make in the game. It's like, it's wild to me that that stuff exists uh, and that like the community is able to make awesome. those choices. And it's honestly awesome. That it's they're it's able to Larian do that. level of early access done right. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it, it absolutely is. Also, Frog Race, go vote for it. Download the game, please. The frogs need to be a playable race. Frogs need representation. Frogs need representation. <laughs> Screw the bat <laughs> steampunk ladies and the weird forest fox people. No, no, no wait a minute. No, you we frog, don't need steampunk cool. bat fats. steampunk ladies. We you need just frogs. said a few things that I like. Those are great words. We need frogs. And when they're put together, Especially I'm Especially in that order. <laughs> Frogs, please. The frogs look badass. Uh, the current four races are um, there's beaver people, which I call dwarves, Wizard. which is really stupid. I do, I do love beavers. Yeah, there's the beaver people. There's lizards. Yeah, and then uh, there's the humans. Uh, is is I think like the base race. Um, humans are boring. Yeah. And those, those, those races, one of the mechanics of the game is those races do certain things better. So the beavers, you want to make them your woodworkers and you'll get faster uh, chopping down of trees because they're beavers. Um, funny enough, this is probably the first time I've ever re referred what, to harpies. Them. Yeah, and harpies is the fourth race I just unlocked. Yeah, I haven't messed with them yet. Um, but beavers are, are woodworkers. Lizards are... Um, you want them to like deal with, uh, with uh, butchering or... Um, um, animal hunting, things like that. Then humans are really good at farming. So you want to put them on all the farms. Um, of course they are. Yeah. Humans. Makes so sense. vanilla. Yeah. We're boring. Uh, but there's, there's a lot going on in the game. It, it is, here's me. Like, now, do you control all those races at the same time or do you, yeah. or do you choose to? Oh, okay. Yeah. Know. They all, they, there, there is, there's, I don't want to say there's no fighting. Cause I think much, much later in the game, there is a sense of fighting that you like have to have a constant pushback against a certain thing. Um, but the game's all about just like building and making sure that your civilization can like prosper. Uh, Story-wise, lore-wise, it's because the queen is wanting you to grow, uh, you know, the civilization out. And that's what the red bar is, is that if you don't uh, please the queen, She's gonna kill you. <laughs> like, it's kind of dark, but you get, you got to make sure that the queen is, uh, you know, she gets what she wants ultimately. Um, but yeah, it's it's great, and it's also, I want to say it's like thirty dollars uh, or or twenty dollars, twenty five dollars, something like that. It's not uh, not super expensive, um, and early access, and the developers are just killing it. It seems like they did a couple sponsored streams for it. I think this past week, which is. I saw, uh, I think I saw Day Nine playing it, and so I was like, "Oh, I'll check that out. Looks kind of cool." Chat recommended it, and then I got lost in it. And now I'm, I'm I, I might play some more tomorrow, if not the rest of this week, uh, on stream and off stream. Oh yeah, twenty bucks. Yeah, I've only played it two hours. I can tell you that game's worth twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's people that were in my stream with, like I said, hundreds and and hundreds that haven't seen everything, haven't unlocked all of the buildings. Um, have it unlocked all the different like cornerstones that can complete RNG things that will affect your civilization so that, you know, every storm that happens or every 
whatever that happens, you get plus one whatever. Uh, and I'm also on the beginning difficulty. It's not super hard. I think there's six difficulties, maybe maybe five. Uh, you can make the game really hard if you know what you're doing. Uh, and there's also a demo, as Chad is pointing out. There's also a demo if you want to grab that, which I think it's just the tutorial. Um, so it's great. Uh, if you're ever overwhelmed, like if you saw SteamWorld dig and you're like, man, that looks really overwhelming. This is kind of a simplified version of all that. If you can look at a menu and see that, man, I really need to make sure that my humans get a human house because I have two people homeless right now, you could play this game. <laughs> like that's, that's the core of the game is I need to satisfy this need. Let's build this thing. Great. That thing is satisfied. What do I need to do next? And you just keep doing that until that bar is filled at the bottom. Honestly, the biggest selling point for this game, the reason why I actually just put it on my wish list is because uh, it's modular. Uh, the games, it's two hour game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go on to the next one. Yeah. I like that. I like that's the, the, that's the roguelite element right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, mm. that's definitely way more appealing to me than, than like, when are you done building? You're not. I hate that. Like, hey, I, I think it's like why oh, open ended and open ended games and building games and shit like that always had a like a sour taste because it's like, what are you building towards? Whatever you want to build. Yeah. Like, no, I want an end. I want a goal. I'm yeah. very goal oriented. Yeah. Had a, I, I know you've been using this more and more lately. Had a request. Uh, have you played on the Steam Deck? Uh, no. I wonder how this would work, actually. You'd probably have to use the like touch screen, which I haven't really messed too much with. Or maybe the, the haptic pad also would probably work. Um, the UI is, is I had a comment yesterday when I was streaming that the UI is, uh, they, they refer to it as a mobile game UI. And so that might actually work on a Steam Deck, honestly, uh, that it's presented as such. There's also, if you want help, I just saw it there for a split second on screen. You can read a lot about this game. <laughs> like they have entire massive glossaries. Uh, this is the overworld, by the way, where I'm choosing the next level I want to go to. Each one of those question marks gives you a random bonus to things around it. This is the main city where you can go in and like look at the uh, progression for upgrades. Uh, I am level two. I don't know how many levels. There's probably a 50, 100 levels in the game. Um, you get XP through like doing different things uh, called deeds. Those give you um, levels and then those levels allow you to buy the upgrades, which you get the different resources uh, for completing missions as well as just doing like small um, missions within the game. Chat's saying there's 17 levels right now to unlock everything. Did you, it. you might've already covered this, but uh, are there difficulty settings? Yes, there's a lot. There's four, oh. four or five difficulties maybe. Oh. Um, and you get more rewards, I want to say, on higher difficulties. So, like, I got 12 of whatever the currency is, I think, for finishing a map. I think if you play on higher difficulties, that obviously starts to scale. Um, okay. But, yeah, still early access. They're still adding to it. There's already tons of hours within the game, and the fact that they're continuing to add to it with things like a fifth race and, and all of the other things in it that you can do. Um this seems like a really good game. And again, this, if you didn't hear it the first time, it is a roguelite city builder. Fucking weird mishmash of genres, but uh, they made it work. I, I haven't really played a game like that before. So maybe it'll spawn an entirely new genre. Uh, kind of like, I mean, SteamWorld Dig was kind of like that in a weird way. I think you have multiple maps in that, so... If they can take exactly what Zeke said, if they could take that like Anno 1800 experience of here's a 70 hour map and condense that down to two hours over multiple maps, that'd be really cool. So that's against the storm. Zeke, where are we going? Potentially last CD well, run. First, for, first I had a question else. for you. Uh, no, I just had a question for you. Uh, the, your talk about difficulty actually brought this up for me. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm playing Marvel Midnight Suns as my, you know, relaxing off stream game, whatever. Whenever I get to it, I play it. Sure. Um, did you go all the way to the last, last difficulty? I when pushed, it came up? I, I, so I did not finish the game. 
Um, oh, you didn't? Okay. No, okay. and it's because that game's like 70 to 90 hours. Uh, Big. <laughs> it's fucking stupidly huge. Uh, but I got to, I want to say second from the hardest, because uh, okay. you, you can only make the game as difficult as far as you progress, and then eventually you unlock like the hardest difficulty. That I, I I just recently did that. I just recently like unlocked the ultimate three difficulty or whatever. It oh, is. so you are you and, past? Uh, I I want to say I finished Act One or a little bit past Act One. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you fight a big lady? I'll just say that. Like big I don't in think size. I did. Okay. I I know who That's, that could I be. I just did that. I just did all the stuff with Ghost Rider. Let's go there. Okay. That was the last time I played okay. was two and okay. a half months ago. And I did all the stuff with Ghost Rider. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I was just, I was just curious if you played it on that because I'm on, like I, I put it when the difficulty came up, I was like, Oh man, it's re it's pretty goddamn hard it right gets now. It's tough. Yeah. And then I got to, got to that particular fight that I was the, with the big lady. And I'm like, I had to fucking do that shit several times and I barely eked it out <laughs> on the ultimate two difficulty. And like ultimate three seems like I was just wondering if it was if I was doing something wrong or it's just really it's actually really fucking hard or something. No, it it definitely uh from my experience in terms of difficulty with, with Midnight Suns, it started to get where if my characters weren't optimized or I didn't like um mm -hmm roll of all of their abilities with like the rng aspects to the cards i would just enter into it like or, or i had all the base cards because i didn't play every single character because you have to do extra missions for that essentially i would just get yeah. absolutely rolled um okay specifically okay. with those ghost rider maps i went into those sure. with uh with robbie being like the base deck mm -hmm. and it sucked like it, it was just so hard. <laughs> even, even Dude, with that, it, 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 I would, I had, I think I had like six or seven restarts on one of the maps. It like I play pretty uh, across the board. I play like all the characters. Like, yeah, I honestly, I play the characters that that uh, I, I play. I play the, I play friendship and not and not like skills. Yeah. So like whoever I can take on the mission to get better friendship with, that's who I take. Um and. Uh, Quickly, I was like, oh, Ms. Marvel or uh, Captain uh, Marvel, Captain Marvel, excuse me, Captain Marvel. Dude, she is a killer. She's and then eventually it was just yeah. like, she's dog shit now. Compared really? to like, yeah. you, don't, you don't think she's great. She, she lost her. She lost a lot of the flair. Like she did not keep up with. Wow. I want uh, as wonder... far as as far as like AOE and like crowd control shit, like Ghost she Rider was like my, my all star. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've heard Ghost Rider is pretty strong. Uh, I yeah, magic he, was my he gets favorite up character, there. and magic, magic as well. Did you get magic's sure. ultimate? But also, no, not yet. Nah. The thing where she I haven't uh, got anybody's ultimate yet. Magic's. Do you mind if I tell you what it is and how strong it is? No, go right ahead. Be my guest. Magic's ultimate is she taunts everyone in the, everyone on the map, and uh -huh. then goes invulnerable and gets counter. Oh sure. And you, awesome. it like it just destroys people. Yeah, there you go. There's some. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, it's because I'm it. streaming through OBS. Yes, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, "What yeah. the fuck?" Okay. Yeah. Uh, she was. I got to turn she this crazy. Off. She was absolutely crazy. I really liked her. Character. Okay. Uh, yeah, like I haven't gotten anybody's ultimates yet. Like none of my characters have ultimates because I haven't concentrated on any of them. Got it. Did you they're do all, the Deadpool? They're all at like mid tier. Did you do the Deadpool? No, stuff? I haven't. I, I, I haven't got the DLC. Like, is it oh, a okay. free DLC or is it paid? Might be part of the season I don't, pass. Okay, yeah, I didn't get that. So yeah. I have not done any Deadpool anything yet. Yeah, yeah, I think the, but, I think it's season pass. Yep. So that yeah, I just wanted to know. Just just curious how how difficult difficult is, and I'm glad to see like I, there's a couple of people in chat that were like, yeah, around Ultimate two and three, you got to get kind of meta. You yeah. know, you got to kind of look up some stuff. I've heard which, that as well. I, I I the only thing I've been looking the only things I've been really looking up so far is the fucking stupid arbitrary like gift and haven system it's just like oh on who likes what yeah like like there's certain ones that make sense but it's like co shut the Blade fuck up loves... is what it was like when you talked warhammer for an hour you can That's sit fine. there and, and listen i'll go for it i'm you, waiting just Blade listen loves to your chat fishing <laughs> yeah yeah it's weird why like the fuck it's weird 
whatever. Anyway, what it is. Yeah. You want to go to another C Rom? Yeah, the final one. What, where are we headed? Um, anywhere. Take us anywhere, Zeke. Let's. <laughs> what, you know what? Co- I'll tell you where five we're going. minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Doing your baby ass chat. Shut the fuck up. Go it's listen more... to everyone talk about Warhammer for two and a half hours. But Warhammer's interesting. Okay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather blow my fucking brains out than host another Warhammer Careful. show. Well, oh, no! You did it! <laughs> he said it! Oh, oh I sa- God! I said that after he, he left it. last time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Zeke, <laughs> yeah. yeah. where are we headed? Yeah. Awesome, though. No, I, I'm going to just, I'm just going to go through the, the Twitch VODs and ca- gather up every single instance of saying Zeke looks bored. Zeke say something. Like I'm going to gather up all of those and you're going to watch chat roll for th- you know 24 hours. It's just going to be anyway. Uh let's yeah. let's you know what gum shoes? I don't let's know find Carmen San Diego. Oh. Oh my god, the originals? Wait, what they is played, a gum uh, shoe? Is that it's a, a private eye. It's a private heard that term dick. for gum shoe. Yeah. No, I'm sure it's a detective. God damn, I'm the guy got to shut that up. I'm going to give it a sub to nice tits, bro. <laughs> Just turn the notifications off. <laughs> well, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. I for, well, I forget because this is only the, what, the third show we've done it yeah. with OBS yeah, virtual yeah. cam? Yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I got Where in the World is Carmen San Diego Deluxe Edition. Oh my god, um, it's it is. <laughs> what? Oh hell yeah. What's in the deluxe uh, edition, uh, Zeke? What do you what do you pay extra for? I honestly I think it's just like better. It's it's basically the same game as the ones previous because these Carmen San Diego games based the ba- same basic game was is has been released with different like versions of it like 10 of them huh of the same basic game just little differences you know um so if you've played one you probably get it you probably played all of them you know it's it's a very similar way of of navigating through the game um it's just like the phone looks different maybe it has an antenna in this version it doesn't have an antenna in this version uh we did have a little bit of trouble getting this one going because uh my my sound card yeah my sound, my sound, sound card blaster wasn't, 64 it, dot exe it, 16 yeah the sb16 or sb pro was not compatible right away or something it wasn't like the voices weren't coming through the midi was fine because we had general midi on and general midi like usually takes <laughs> care of everything so we had that going and then we tried i mean you can do the roland but you know general midi usually takes care of everything you need but then you know the sound blaster pro is probably or sound, sound blast or anything it's usually the universal thing but sometimes you got to go to the, like you know different stuff like creative you know, i or never whatever i never uh, understood when when like console people that love video games and love specifically console games are like god that pc shit is too hard now i understand why it's because everything that you just described completely attached that stigma to it in like the the late 90s early 2000s Oh yeah, it was a fucking mess. You gotta know, <laughs> you, like you gotta know. You, you remember that scene in oh, and my doggy, yeah. oh my puppy. Yeah. Um, you remember I'm that chilling. scene in Hackers where uh, where they're all sitting around a table, and they're quizzing the new guy on like the hacker books. Yeah, like what what about this? Is like yeah, that's the the pink shirt book, also known as the big book that's too big to fit on your shelves. Like these are sh- things that you like just internalize. You just know like what your IO port is and what like you know what what uh what frequency 220 is the standard like the stock um and that yeah. you're that that kind of shit you just know it's just after doing it for a while um anyways hack the planet you got to hack the getting to yeah. Carmen San Diego uh it was it's it's definitely super fun for a day um it <laughs> also it, <laughs> Yeah, that's how you know that you're in the there right he is. spot. That's, yeah, that's how you know, man. That's how you know. If you travel to a location and it starts off with an animated bad guy going across, that you're on the trail. You know you pick the right spot. You're on the trail of whomever. Um, I did not finish the game because little did I know that there are. I don't remember how many exactly, but there were like twenty something. 
uh promotions that you have to get before you like actually get the final one the the highest promotion and actually go look for carmen san diego like i huh. was like a third of the way through and i was like oh shit we're on the trail of actual carmen san diego and someone in the chat was like um no <laughs> here's all the things and i was like detective master detective master or inspector junior inspector senior inspector master inspector I was like it took me three missions to get a fucking upgrade <laughs> so like there is a ton of like, what is an upgrade content this in game? this sweet juicy content it's a promotion that's right oh yeah. and that just unlocks yeah, you more get, maps you get... or, or more missions or something sort of yeah okay. yeah yeah uh, there's a lot of repeat locations and stuff because they can only you know only give you like so much trivia but right um yeah you you eventually start like you get some like through my uh, my stream of the game i got a couple of repeat clues and stuff like that um but uh, uh as as oftentimes is the case with games like this they'll give you similar like uh trivia questions but not exactly the same but you know, like from the previous one, you're like, oh, they're just rewording this question in a different way. Okay. I know where to go now. I know I got to go to Kuala Lumpur. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Does it have all but the, it was fun. like all the but, sound that you would recognize from the show? If that makes sense. Like this, is it like the true Carmen San Diego experience? I guess is what I'm asking. Um, This, I believe came out before or around the same time as the the television. Oh, I think show. the game was out before the show. Oh, really? Well, the game was definitely was, out, but right? this version, yeah, yeah. like the okay. deluxe version, I think came out in 90. Yeah, the rock capella in yeah, 94, 93. Yeah. But don't worry. Don't worry. If you watch the VOD, oh, we played that song at least six times. Good. Because that Good. might be my favorite theme song of any show ever. Um, it's pretty good. I love it. Every time I hear it, I'm just come on, come on. Like I good song. love that. Joke. Love that. Joke. Oh, it was the, it was um, the broader bun software era. That's a, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Was that the publishing? Yeah. Broader bun. Yeah. Broader yeah. Bun? Founded, founded in 1980. They made Prince of Persia. Oh, wow. Uh, load runner. Remember those games? The print shop Mist. man. That just makes me nostalgic and a little sad for like, you know, walking in the, uh, the Babbage's just seeing those giant boxes. Reader, reader rabbit. Yeah. That game. Uh, reader rabbit's huge. Mm-hmm. Wow. They're, they're definitely becoming actually after this stream was over, someone linked me like a little half an hour, like documentary on the, on the, on the television show. Oh yeah. Uh, um, Am I misremembering? Yeah, I mean, it was it was about Cor Carmen San Diego as a whole, but it it really um focused on the television. Am I misremembering, or did Mark Summers host that show? No, or am I, am I just thinking no, that, was, that, Mark, that was? I'm just thinking Mark, Mark Summers, Summers did everything. Dare. Yeah, he did like everything Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, this was PBS. Yep. Carmen San Diego. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um. Yeah, it's actually a really interesting and a pretty short watch, only like half an hour, but it's it's an interesting documentary. I think I I don't remember who what company did it, but it was it was interesting to see how they like made the show and how they uh how it came together and stuff and how the 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 actress that they got for the chief like she did she they she turned it down several times because it's like it's too time uh oh, to uh, read all too, that. Yeah, too much it's too much time to like be on the show and like all, do, do like because they did like three shows a day <laughs> you know like yeah it was a lot yeah um so she recorded most of her stuff like most of the stuff that she did that wasn't interacting with like live people she recorded it because if you watch the show she's like talking through a television or talking directly to the camera to the gumshoes <laughs> who she doesn't ever name like by name so but it's like this game brought brought, uh, brought back a ton of memories and uh i oh i found out um that the the show the the game show that they had made of of carmen san diego they don't release or like to release like the old episodes why 
for the for the sole reason that they are not factually accurate anymore. Oh, at the, so much of the world at the changed. end of at the end of all of the shows uh, at the end of Carmen San Diego the show every I time I don't like where this they is would going. say <laughs> the facts oh, no, no, no. of it's this just... show were one hundred percent true at the time of filming. No, that that's why I don't like where this. I don't like things that <laughs> change that much with time. I'm well, sure they, the world was, has changed entire, so much. Yeah. yeah, it was an entire show on geography. So yeah. as borders and things change and sure. you know, countries, yeah, all that stuff. Is Some of that stuff that they probably don't even, in some cases, don't even exist anymore. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. To, like, I got to show off how little I know about, about geography and how, how bad our <laughs> U.S. education is. When I'm it sure comes that to that fun. kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And also, like, there were countries in the game that are no longer countries and stuff like that. So that, I mean, oh, there's yeah. some factual inaccuracies as far as, you know, modern times go. But <laughs> it was a fun little trip. And uh, it had surprising, like it, like I said, it had a surprising amount of content that I didn't even get to. Yeah, cool. Very cool. It's a wild one. Wild games. Uh, yes, Defunct Land. Thank you. Less Sanity. What is that defunct? was the name of the uh, oh, uh, documentary. Defunct Land? Yeah, defunct. Okay. Land. Got it. Documentary, yeah. Might watch that. Might watch that. Uh, Zeke, in less than a, uh, let's just do thumbs up, thumbs down. You watching Last of Us? Yeah. I didn't watch the the most recent one that came out yesterday. Uh, no, no, no. There's only three episodes out. Newest one's out tonight. Oh, tonight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yes, I'm. I'm caught up then. Okay. Thumbs up. You liking it? I am absolutely liking it. Okay. I haven't seen episode three yet. Uh, I think we're watching it. Random questions this. for for us that have played through Last of Us. Is it possible to spoil the show? Yes. Yes. I mean, it's the game in the show. No, 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 no. I'm saying if we've played through the game, is it possible to spoil the show for others? Are there thing are there are there things in the show that are changed enough to be spoilers if we've played through the game? Yes. Oh. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I haven't seen any of them yet. I'm waiting for them all to come out, and I'm going to binge them. So kind of? Kind of? Yeah. Ep episode... Oh, yeah. That epi is saying 100% yes. The show changes some stuff. That's yeah. what I was wondering. Episode 3, for example, is... Com it's different, but it's additive, if that makes sense. Like oh, for sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they're not changing a lot of the core stuff. They're It's additive to kind of the world. Oh, man. In that case, I can't wait for the last episode. Right. That's gonna be that's gonna be oof. <laughs> there th yeah, man. Also, that's be tonight. careful about binging that. I don't I mean, I don't know if you're yeah. one to be uh affected by media in terms of uh like depression. Oh. Some of that I, stuff I did, is pretty <laughs> fucking hard. I I did <laughs> I did indeed also watch Cyberpunk Edge Runners. So uh, yeah, yeah. I I mean that was depressing. I think yeah. episode three might be really. I don't know. Chat, I've, I haven't watched it. I'm just going off of what people said. I've heard episode three is like really Dude, fucked Edge, up. Edge runners put me in like a like a near coma in some regards for like three days. Like I, is it is it like that? I I haven't watched it, so I don't want to say yes or no. Zeke oh, would have to be the one. Okay, but I don't think Zeke said seen Edge runners right. You haven't watched that, right, Zeke? It, I tried. I tried watching a couple episodes, and it didn't grab me. Okay. It wasn't for me. I don't think. Yeah, cool. I. I have, Maybe I need to uh, give it another chance, though. People have told me that they have not ever been affected by like media in terms of like crying or whatnot. And they like full on ugly cried at episode wow. three. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll space it out. But I, I gotta warning. say, I gotta say, like, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but like. That was an easy win, though. I gotta say, <laughs> sure, that was a fucking yeah. easy win. It's like, it's like, uh, uh, do you want a round of applause <laughs> from an audience, from any audience, like in probably the U.S., maybe the entire world? Say you're bringing out Mister Rogers. Oh my God, Mister <laughs> Rogers! It was like that's fun. That's an easy win, dude. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what that episode was for me. It's like, yeah, okay. Okay, of course. Sure. We're gonna, I, I feel like we're going to have to talk about it once we've all seen it. Yeah, one, once we finish it, we yeah. should definitely talk yeah. about it, uh, without a doubt. It'll it'll be wrapped cool. up uh, end of March, so maybe like April-ish we can oh. talk about it. 
I thought you said tonight was the last episode or something. No, no, I said uh, it ends on March 28th. I, I remember this happened earlier in the episode. And I knew you were confused, but I figured chat would say you're right. The game is being delayed till March 28th, and the final episode comes out on like March 25th or 26th. And so oh. the idea is that they're pushing the game back, even though they didn't stay as such, to ride the full hype wave of the show. Ending. So there's going to be like 12-ish plus episodes from the sounds of it? Like I think bunch? there's 10. 10, okay. Yeah, chat, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I want to say there's That's 10 saying episodes. nine. Okay, nine. okay yeah. 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 So we're about a week or so. Okay, then. great. Yeah. yeah, we could definitely discuss it uh, into March, early April. Yeah, I heard they're pushing The Last of Us back because they had problems with the copyright title or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, someone's, yeah, someone sniped it. Yeah. By the way, funny little note real quick before we go. Uh, okay. Force Gaming, who is a big oh, YouTuber yeah. for awesome. Strategy Gaming, he has been following the day before fiasco for, for a long time. And he has been very vocal that this game is a scam. He actually took the first, uh, some of the scenes from the trailer they released. They are literally shot for shot the exact same as the Call of Duty Zombies trailers. Like, like, com like copied their homework, like the exact shots, the exact angles. What? That's so like, weird. And what's even weirder is it's why, in their own engine. Why were It's in their own like, engine. Yeah. So they looked at the Call of Duty Zombies things and they didn't steal them. They said, we're going to remake that in our engine to look exactly like that. <laughs> why like i don't Dude. that's just there's so from so many things to steal so that's bizarre there's so many red flags it's like they have a cannon for red flags and they're yeah. just like just like firing them everywhere it's crazy it's yeah. crazy really bizarre stuff really bizarre stuff all right let's wrap co do some shout outs go cool. Uh, big thank you, as always, to JP and Zeke, and thank you guys for watching. My name is Ko. Hello. If you want to check out that game Hitman that we were talking about earlier today, I'll be playing some of that tonight. If you want to check out Dark and Darker, I'll probably be playing that tomorrow morning. And then we're going into the Steam Next Fest stuff, uh, which I'm going to be doing lots of demos. We'll probably do what we call on the channel Demo Days, which a lot of streamers do. Um, basically, we're just going to start getting a bunch of demos that are going to be released because we probably got a ton coming out tomorrow. We'll play through them. We'll get suggestions from chat on, the, on your favorite demos. Play those too and do all that kind of stuff as well. So hope seeing the channel. If I don't see you then, see you next week. Uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up this week. So yeah, see you guys then. Cool, cool. Zeke, do some shout outs. And I got to run. See you guys mate. later. Thanks. See you. Bye. <laughs> you going now? Okay. <laughs> Zeke hey, Zeke, it's always great to see you, bud. <laughs> Thanks, man. You motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to fucking find you. <laughs> <laughs> perfect uh my name is ezekiel third you can find me at or slash ezekiel underscore i i, I on twitch twitter and youtube or ezekiel the third all spelled out on instagram and tiktok uh i uh, want to thank you guys for watching and i want to thank my co-host uh jp and co for being wonderful every week i will be streaming at uh on tuesday at 10 a.m pacific i will be starting hi-fi rush i'm gonna give it a look and uh i'm going to go into it with the attitude of co i'm just gonna hate it i'm gonna yeah. hate on it until it proves Wait, is this it doesn't deserve my hate is this the 340th episode complete swap where now co hates games it's finally happened oh my god <gasps> he's played so oh. many that he hates them and i'm out here trying demos he does yeah it's weird <laughs> it's weird man um <laughs> yeah but i'm gonna be doing high uh, hi-fi rush and uh, I've got like lots of games in the pipeline uh, now that CD Ramathon's over. So I hope to see you on my stream when I start streaming. So that's all I got. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, I think tomorrow will probably, I, I, I'm trying to decide when I want to jump into Dark and Darker. I think it might be later in the week so that like people that are good at the game get, get it out of their system. And then when I jump in as the complete shitter, I won't get rolled, but maybe maybe that's going to work against me if they get to play and get warmed up. I don't know. I'll be playing it sometime this week. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow, but it will be on the stream at some point. Uh, I do want to check out a bunch of stuff on Steam, on the, the demos that they are all releasing starting tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and then just normal shows. Tomorrow we got MCU crew uh, at our new time, 8 p.m. Eastern, tomorrow evening. Uh, and then Wednesday, more D&D uh, &D with Last Call for Adventure. Uh, that's at 1 p.m. Eastern. I think that's it. I don't think there's, I don't think there's a big game coming out this week, right? Like there's Zeke, there's nothing, no big game at all this week. I think it's just, I don't, I haven't heard of any. 
Yeah, I don't think there's any um, games coming out this week. So we probably won't have that much to talk about. We'll probably talk mostly about demos next week uh, on the yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think probably there's a talk game about at all. that. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, no. I think I think this week is just going to fly by. It's just going to like poof. It's going to be gone before you know it like magic. Yeah. Yeah, it'll it'll be like a a very simple spell incantation. Yeah, it'll just be I gone. think I think so. But speaking of that, I might be late because I got to go to the doctor for my warts on my hog. <laughs> yeah. So that, <laughs> that, that was a stretch, dude. I apologize for that one. I mean, I don't want to hear about you stretching your hog and the warts on it at all. I just need to stop. Co's sending us Morse code. Someone decipher it. He, he actually <laughs> sent a, uh, for some reason, unless the frame is active, it doesn't capture the last frame. And so what you guys are seeing is right when we swapped over to do shout outs. What I'm seeing is Co very upsettingly staring into my soul with a grimace on his face. <laughs> and it's probably in regards to Zeke talking about the stretching of the heart. Yeah. yeah. My, 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 my words. It's, the it's, words it, it really, it's a, le it, you know, the legacy of, uh, I'm not, I won't say it, the legacy of Ezekiel's, uh, all yes. have this, uh, hog and wart issue. Yeah. <laughs> rough yes it's very much it's very much stare uh if yeah. you have that on seven tv all right we're out of here thank you guys for watching we'll see you next week to talk about demos or something yep. whatever else there is have a good one bye bye